Hello friends. Welcome to Muse Fanfiction. How are you all? So in this video, we will see what if Naruto awakened the forbidden Kisun with the spiked Keke Jenke. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. The two genin faced off. One in green with his hite as a belt. One in desert robes, his hite wrapped about the strap on his gourd. At the proctor's signal the green-clad youth jumped to attack. Only to have a crude wall of sand erupt in front of him blocking his assault, only to crash down on the boy. A quick back flip brought him out of reach of the sand. A few more passes, and Lee ended up on the folded hands above and behind the proctor. With a nod from his sensei, Lee removed the weight belts. When he dropped them, the impact crater raised a dust cloud as large as the sand cloud. Now the green ninja was a flash, a flash that got through the sand shield. Gara's eyes started to flicker with yellow and brown flames, the sand reacted. For the next ten minutes the fighters pushed themselves and each other to the next level, and the next. First it was the sand shield, then the sand armor. No matter what the green ninja could break through the sand defense. It was like an onion of sand, peel back one layer, and there is another. But the same could be said for the Suna weapon. This pathetic had beaten the shield, cracked the armor, had even drawn blood. Then the battle reached a new level. The green ninja had opened his chakra gates, and was moving too fast to be seen. He pounded his target into the ground. Literally. But at great cost to himself, he could no longer move on his own. He was at the mercy of the elements. Naruto was all over the place, mentally, physically, emotionally. First Sasuke was drugged from the chamber by Kakashi Sensei. This caused him worry, even if, duck but, was a major pain in the ass. Then Sakura pulled a draw, and lost to Ino, meaning that Nator advanced to the next level. This caused him sorrow, he had hoped they would all pass. His rough end tumble with Kiba and left him stiff and in pain, as he limped back up the steps. Both proud that he had indeed grown stronger, weary, as he had taken quite a beating. Hanada Chan had given him some wondrous ointment, that really lifted his spirits. Her place in the holding of his heart rose, to equal that of Sakura. The ointment, once applied sealed his wounds, almost as if they were never there in the first place. Then in Trump's Neji, trying to crush sweet Hanada Chan. A few words from Naruto, to encourage the girl, and Neji goes ballistic. Only because of quick reactions from the Jonin instructors, did the Hyuga not kill his cousin. That really pissed Naruto off. It violated three tenets of Naruto's personal code. Never strike to kill family, never strike to kill ninja of the village, and never strike to kill those you are to protect. Naruto was seeing red. Then Lee and Gara clashed, and he felt as if another eye opened up. The guy from Gara's village wondered over and was asking questions. Here is a guy that wears baggy pajamas, paints his face and plays with dolls. Okay, so his doll is a killing machine, and he is very good with it, but still, come on. Naruto answered the questions with thought, so while the Suna puppet master was get info, it was coming out garbled and twisted. First the sand shield was breached. Something was drawing Naruto's attention to the red-headed boy. Then the armor was cracked. Naruto had an overpowering urge to jump the rail and look more closely at the sandy ninja. When, bushy brow, slammed, sandman, into the ground, Naruto leaned forward as to see what was under the sand. Only to find that the sand form was empty. Behind, bushy brow, sandman, stood up, the sand sliding off like a sheet of water. That was when Naruto saw that Gara's eyes were flickering with yellow flames. Yes, my brother. Show me what they did to you. Naruto blinked, and looked about, but, Dolly, was muttering under his breath, a slight quiver to his voice. No one else was close enough to have spoken those words. Besides the voice had a female tone of voice. Shrugging he turned back to the floor show. Lee took it the next level, and Gara rose to block him, to push upward once more. When Lee opened his third and fourth gates Naruto's eyes widened. He could see the energy flow around and through the green jump suited ninja. Then Lee moved. Naruto easily tracked him as he took it to the Sandman. When Lee slammed Gara into the floor, then collapsed ten strides away, Naruto was gripping the rail so tight that the metal was twisting in his grip. Gara's eye flared bright yellow as his sand formed into a massive hand, reaching for Lee. Naruto heard Gara whisper, Sand coffin. 
Then his world went dark. Kiyubi had a tough night, almost a week ago, when her warden drew heavily on her. Then to make things worse, someone tried to slap a five-point disruption seal over her binding seal. It disrupted all right. It turned her cage in the sewers into cage on a spire in the middle of the Badlands, where she was assaulted by heat, driving winds, and the high-pitched voices of her host's companions. Now she could not get comfortable enough to fully recharge. It felt as if her tails were caught in trap of some kind. A burst of dark chakra like the one on her seal, caught her attention. She could now see through his eyes, hear with his ears. Granted it was like watching through a waterfall, but it was better than the wind and sun. Seeing the kit get thrown around by the half-breed, brought a smile to her vulpine face. Then how he crushed the half-breed, first by using the half-breed's enhanced senses, then a combination of heavy chakra use and heavy-handed taijutsu, made her proud. When her host crossed paths with the female with pale eyes, she found that there was a bond, on the low end of the spectrum, between the two. She grinned that smug grin that only the most ancient of grandmothers had perfected. Then the girl was fighting, and the kit wanted to jump down and protect her. It warmed her heart that her host was so open and protective of the female. The only thing prevented the kit from coming to her rescue was the chakra grip of the one-eyed Jonin, but when the other Jonin intervened, Naruto just gripped the rail, twisting it. Then things got real interesting. An outsider with something that tickled her memory, but what? An outsider was facing off with a member of the village, one of the protected. Then the fighting grew in power, in anger, as both refused to allow the other the upper hand. She was impressed when the protected, who to her eyes, was considered a cripple by the standards of those around him, went toe to toe with what could only be a jinchuriki. First there was the sand shield, a basic but telling jutsu. Then the shield was bypassed, but the sand armor caught it. When the green ninja slammed the jinchuriki into the floor, it awoke the biju within. Yes, my brother. Show me what they did to you. As each chakra gate of the green ninja opened, the limiters on the biju collapsed until only the will of the jinchuriki kept her old friend in check. When the leaf ninja returned the jinchuriki to the ground, the biju enhanced the finial strike of its host. Sand coffin. She seized control over her host and launched a volley of foxfire into the sand wave, disrupting the chakra matrix within the sand. Landing between the two combatants, enough shikaku. Jonin, remove your youngling. The red-headed ninja climbed to his feet, his eyes burning with yellow flames. I was going to kill that. Give it back. No it is mine. Kiyubi spoke gently. It is of the village, and the village is under my protection. She cocked her head to the side. It seems your seal is. Flawed. The professor grinned as he watched his genin, his king, take the will of fire, to the others. First Sasuke beats Yoroi into the ground, only to be hauled out by Kakashi. Shino defeats Zaku by stuffing the tubes in the sound ninja's hands with his beetles. The third frowned when the Suna puppet master killed his opponent. But something about the now dead ninja was just off. The guy wore a leaf hite, but he could not remember the guy's name. The old man was pleased that the rest of his kids had yet to kill, that there was still some time for them to be kids. Watching Ino and Sakura knock one another out brought a frown to his face. Two of his own were fighting no matter who won, one of his lost. He grinned when they popped each other, taking them both out. Tenten demonstrated her skill with her weapons, but still lost to the Suna Kunoichi's wind attacks. Nara Shikamaru had to think fast, and won against the sound Kunoichi by the skin of his shadow. He had a good laugh at Naruto's second-to-last assault on young Kiba, but how else was he to get enough of an upper hand to do a full strike on the pup? His creative use of the henge was good, but in the end it was his ability to just soak the damage inflicted by the bonded pair that won the day. Then it got nasty, the Hyuga prodigy took on and took down the Hyuga heir. It was not just a show of skill in the clan's art, but a brutal attack on the younger Hyuga by her older cousin. Just before he could kill her, the Jonin had moved. It warmed the old man's heart to see Naruto jump to the defense of the Hyuga princess. Then came the match between the boy who had nothing but Taijutsu, and the third ninja from Suna. It started out simple, then Lee showed that he was a ninja, that he did not need weapons. He was the weapon. First the weights came off. Then he opened his gates. The Hokage heard the flesh tearing, the bones popping, and the boy had yet to attack after reaching this level of power. Then Lee moved. He ripped through Gara's sand shield, smashed the sand armor, and dominated the fight, 
ending with a massive body slamming of Gara into the floor. Sand coffin, Gara whispered. Naruto spasmed and threw three orbs of a lime green fire at the wave sand that was sweeping toward Lee. Naruto dropped to the floor, standing between the two combatants. Enough Shikaku. Jonin, remove your youngling. Naruto's voice sounded off. Mighty Guy moved to collect his student, even as the boy rose like a puppet on strings. Gara stood slowly, as if he were some kind of rag doll puppet. I was going to kill that. Give it back. No it is mine. Naruto spoke gently. It is of this village, and this village is under my protection. He cocked his head to the side. It seems your seal is. Flawed. His hand erupted in lime green fire, as he lunged forward, catching Gara in the chest. There, that should allow you to sleep tonight, you and your host. Tomorrow, seek out my host, and we will talk, just the four of us. The Hokage knew who was talking, he knew the names of the creatures. It chilled him to the bone to know that the power that was possible to being released between these two, could turn the local area into a five-mile circle of glass. He noticed that the Suna Janan's eyes widened as the whole team from Suna froze. So they know what Gara is, who he holds, the old man thought to himself. As if their stings were cut, both Naruto and Gara collapsed into a light slumber. The seals reclaiming their prisoners. Kakashi and Baki dropped and collected their charges. Baki draped the sleeping Gara over his shoulder. Looks like we all get to sleep tonight. They returned the balcony overlooking the chamber. The proctor called the last two ninja to the floor. Choji and the last sound ninja squared off, until Dosu made a commit about the girth of the leaf ninja, and Choji blew it all out of proportion. The resulting clash ended with Choji in a wall, out cold. The sound ninja was given the match. Nine numbered tiles were dropped into a box, then offered to the winners of their matches, with their Jonin drawing if they could not. Kakashi drew for Sasuke, Baki for Gara, and Anko for Naruto. The matchups are Naruto vs. Neji, Gara vs. Sasuke, Konkuru vs. Shino, with Shikamaru vs. first Tamari then Dosu. For some reason, the Hokage did not believe that Dosu would survive the coming month. Catching the eye of Kakashi, he moved toward Baki. Once they were in range, he whispered, I think that it would solve some issues of your students if they spent the night in a private ward in the hospital. Baki glanced between the two Jinchuriki, as he no guessed what who, the blonde was. He turned to look at the Jonin carrying the blonde, licking his lips. Okay, you can take my nephew, but I will need him back as soon as he wakes up. We have some training to do, after all. He stepped away from the slumbering form of Gara, waving his other two charges to follow him out into the sun. The Hokage waved two teams of medical ninja over. Have these two taken to my suite at the hospital. My personal doctor will be by to see to their health. Now to deal with the village council. It seems that the Kyubi is wake and able to act through young Naruto. But, why did it move to protect Lee? Then he remembered. Gara, Shukaku stood slowly, as if he was a ragdoll puppet. I was going to kill that. Give it back. No it is mine. Naruto, Kyubi spoke gently. It is of the village, and the village is under my protection. Now we are under its protection. The old man murmured, but they refereed to Lee as it. I so need for Jiraiya to return, even more now. Then he swirled away in flurry of leaves. Naruto awoke on a windswept mesa, with the sun beating down. Oddly he was both freezing and burning at the same time. Ah, you're awake. Good. We need to talk before Shukaku and his host arrive. The voice was close, and both warming and cooling at the same time. Naruto groaned as he sat up. It felt as every joint was stiff, and his muscles were overworked. Did you catch the name of the village that ran me over? Good one, host. What you're feeling the mental equivalent of not using your body. Just talking to me, should decrease this over time. A regal looking woman in a kimono looked down at the slumped genin. Like you are going to limit it to just just talking. After we deal with Shukaku, you will be coming here once a week for tea, instruction, and whatever else I deem important. Naruto gave her his squinty look. She stood a little taller than he was. Her kimono was of an old style, but it still looked off, as if there was more than what he saw. Now first, I need you to picture a large umbrella. Naruto looked around, looking closely at the thirty-foot rough circle of flat and polished stone. He nodded, and suddenly there was a massive lacquered umbrella, eight feet tall, with a six-foot radius. The sun no longer burning, even the wind calmed. 
Grinning at his accomplishment, he went a step further, and laid a thick rug on the ground. A tea table and a large pile of cushions shimmered into place. A smile on her face, and Naruto added a black teapot and two cups. My lady, join me for a tea? Her laugh was musical. My good host, I think I will. As she eased down into a kneeling potion, the teapot started to steam. I can shift things that are here, but I needed you to bring them in. Once you get a chance, look around the edge of the mesa. You will see the seal that binds me here, etched into the rock. There is a spike is the closest I can describe it, that is interfering with the seal. When the one you know is the fourth, sealed me in here, he designed it to keep me contained. The best way to contain something, do not make it uncomfortable in its cell. She reached behind her and swept her tails into her lap. Last week you drew heavily on my chakra. This is what the biju ceiling is for, so that was okay. She poured tea into the two cups. During this time, someone drove the spike into our seal, most likely a disharmonious seal, designed to disrupt your chakra network. She sipped from her cup, and hummed in pleasure. Did anyone touch our seal? At his nod, we will look into that later, as it's something I cannot do, and having you mess with it could kill us. The spike has allowed us to merge on a new level. It seems that you now have a Keke Jenke. It is based on the powers of the race known as the Kisyun, a race that is very dear to me. As it stands, you are the first of the line, and so you must, when the time is right, take a maid and pass on the Keke Jenke. After we were, spiked, you slept for a long time. This allowed your body to begin its transformation. I do not know exactly what you can do, but it seems that Foxfire is the basic element of our new bloodline. Sweet. Now they will have to recognize me. Now host, we need to talk about tomorrow. I intercepted an attack on one of our fellow villagers. Shukaku was going to kill that loud green gaki. Bushy brow. She snorted in humor. Yeah, him. What you mortals do among yourselves, is up to you. But for a biju to kill a mortal of mine, in my territory, in front of me. Big no anyway, Shukaku and his host will be coming here. We will learn why they are here, what plans they have. Things like that. She looked Naruto over. Too bad you both are male. The offspring of two hosts are quite the bonus. Naruto's spit take knocked him from the table and off the edge of the mesa, effectively waking him up. Naruto snapped awake. He was in a white room. He sat up slowly, looking around. Hospital room. Damn they caught me again. The hyperactive ninja thought. But he was not alone. Looking closely he noticed that Gara was in a deep sleep. Sleep well for something tells me that when we awake tomorrow, the fun really begins. He rolled over and went back to sleep, trusting the old man to protect him from reprisal. The Hokage, the teaching Jonin, Kakashi, Kurenai, Asuma, and Gai, Ibiki, and Anko stood around a table in a small room. And you are sure that it was Orochimaru? Yes. Hissed Anko, I would know the smell of Teme sensei anywhere. The Gaki did well in keeping him at bay. I congratulate Kakashi on training a team able to stand up to a Sanin long enough for me to get there. He is not just here to steal one of our genin, but some deeper and darker plan. So he is not after Sasuke? Asked Kakashi. Sasuke is part of the plan, Anko answered. But Teme sensei liked to plan big, like an onion, each move and counter move were just covering yet another move. If you blocked one advance, he had another three set up. She picked up a skewer of Dango. I do know this, stopping the Chunin exams is not going to stop him. While the confusion of the coming and going of everyone will hide some of his movements, it will also hide our preparations as well. And even if we halted the exams, he still would be in our midst, but we would not have the cover for our movements. I must ask, Ibiki's somber voice cooling the room, if we take him, are you going to be the one to work him over? As much as I want to, she shook her head. I would lose control and either kill him, or allow him to kill me and escape. She bit into the glazed orb, chewed then swallowed. I cannot even be in the same room as him, or watching on a live feed. I fear that he might have left something in my head, something that you and the Mindwalker, Yamanaka missed. But I want to see the whole thing. Maybe even a copy to take home and watch before bed. Her grin caused shivers to run up even Ibiki's back. As night settled over the village, the council chambers was packed. Considering that what happened during the elimination round was for ninja knowledge only, it was no surprise that the whole town knew something of it. Or thought they did. Everyone was whispering, well everyone who whispered, 
so that excluded the Hyuga, stoic silence, the Abirame. Though there was a buzz, the Akamichi. Though he was eating spiced crisps, the Nara, napping. A tired Serutobi, dragged, into the room. Dropping into his chair, he listened to the murmurs of the of the various heads of house clan share what little they knew of what happened this last week. He smiled. One rumor in five had a grain of truth. Most were centered around the Jin Shiriki and his biju. Mitokado Homura called the chamber to order. Once the room was quiet, Serutobi spoke. By now, many of you have heard something of what happened this afternoon. Not all of what you heard is true, nor complete. We will start with the important issues and work our way down from there. Good. Now we are finally going to do something with that demon brat. A high-pitched female civilian exploded into motion. Only to stop when a kanai bit into the railing near her hand. Naruto is on the agenda, but there are matters of a higher importance. The Hokage spoke gently. First, my greatest failure, Orochimaru is returned. The room went quiet. Even the bugs in the Abarame were quiet. The Hokage grinned to himself, never showing it on his face. Ha! Huh. That shut you all up. Taking a deep breath, and to make matters worse, he plans on leaving here with our last Uchiha. What he plans on doing with the boy, we do not know, but he has already marked the boy, and was seen trying to take him from the hospital. This sent the council into a tizzy, someone was trying to take their prized Uchiha from them. Danzo, from his shaded corner, cleared his throat. No doubt you have a plan in place. We have several. The Hokage answered. Among them, we need to include the possibility that the village is going to be overrun by outside forces. All civilians need to be ready to move to the shelters at a moment's notice. We do not know when the attack will happen, if an attack is going to happen. As these details are of ninja business, no further details will be voiced here. I will see the heads of house and clans privately over the next few days. With the finials of the exam coming upon us, it is good cover for us to look into increasing our supplies in case this turns into a siege. Merchants will need to double if not triple their stock, they may use some of the caves for storage. Anbu will be made available to arrange things as needed. Okay. A somber male from the civilian side stood up. While that is a big issue, I think I speak for most of us non-ninja. We trust in you and your ninja to keep us safe. Now onto this issue with the blonde freak. The Hokage frowned. Did you not just say that you trusted us to deal with the issues to keep you safe? He chuckled at the looks on many of the faces before him. Okay. Let's shed some light on the issues surrounding our little Naruto. Last week, he and his team came across a Kunoichi from the village hidden in the grass. It turns out that the Kunoichi was Orochimaru in a stolen skin. Both Uchiha and Uzumaki battled Orochimaru, both suffered drastic setbacks, ending with both of them unconscious. Uchiha has a cursed seal similar to Anko's and it is being studied right now by our best seal master. Today, during the elimination round of phase 3, our Rock Lee was facing off against a ninja from Suna, one Gara of the desert. It turns out Gara is also a Jinchuriki, carrying the Shukaku, the one-tailed Biju. The Hokage paused here to fill and light his pipe as he listened to murmurs of the crowd before him. When it grew quiet, Lee was overmatched from the beginning, but he showed true spirit, and by the end of the match, showed us just what we can do if we try. But even with his best. An Anbu burst into the council chamber, my lord Hokage, the Jinchuriki were attacked. Dosu was tired of being ignored, tired of Orochimaru, the Otokage, thinking him to be nothing but a pawn. He and his team had been given the task of killing the Uchiha, and due to the fact that the grass ninja had interfered, had failed. When it came apparent that Orochimaru truly wanted the Uchiha for his own purposes, that scratched him off the target list. He could no longer kill the brat, but he could beat him before the assembled eyes of the cages in the finials. First he needed to ensure that he faced the boy. That meant removing the boy's challenger in the first round. The sand using freak. Dosu sat on a branch under the window to the room where Gara of the Sand was asleep. A quick burst of ultra-high sound, to see if anyone was around, and the Auto Nin was in motion. He jumped at the window sending a burst of sound ahead to clear the glass from his path. He landed lightly as the glass tinkled about him. Channeling chakra through his gauntlet, he raised his right hand as moved to slam a sonic dagger into the sleeping form of Gara. He did not get two steps in, before he was caught in a web of sand. Hold it. A voice from behind him. Do not destroy the arms. Why? This one attacked us. His target sat up. 
The life is yours. I just want the arm. The voice from behind purred. I want its toy. It is intriguing. It will help my host learn to control his chakra better. There was the sound of the sheet moving on the bed. I do request that you either make it a bloodless kill or take outside. The smell of blood gives my host nightmares. You always did know how to ruin my fun. Gara stood up and looked over the auto nin. Take it, so I can take my new toy out and play with it. The other person in the room began to remove the melody arm from the cocooned ninja. As the gauntlet was lifted off his arm, Dosu watched the sand crawl over his flesh like a second skin. Remember, we four need to talk. Have fun. Dosu saw a blonde climb into the bed away from the window, and curl up, just before, Gara carried him out the window and up to the roof. An Anbu opened the door to the room and looked about. Glass on the floor, one of the beds empty, Naruto clutching a weapon that was on the arm of a visiting ninja earlier today. Not good. Then he felt a dark chakra surge coming from the roof. Before he could move, a broken body fell past the open window. Then a limp Gara entered the room. Do see to it that we are not disturbed until dawn. The human puppet dropped into its bed, quickly falling into the deep rhythms of sleep. The Anbu did the only thing he could, he ran to tell the Hokage. An Anbu burst into the council chamber, my lord Hokage, the Jinchuriki were attacked. The Hokage raised an eyebrow. That can be considered a rash thing to declare to the entire village council. He sipped from his pipe. Now tell us, what do you mean? My lords, my ladies. The Anbu bowed to the council as a whole, on my patrol of the hospital, seeing as there has been one attempt on the young Uchiha today already the Anbu guard all slain, and the attacker run off by Hitaki Kakashi. As I approached the room the Jinchuriki were placed in, I felt a cold chakra flare. Hurrying to the room, I peered in, only to see the window had been blown in, the outsider Jinchuriki was missing and our Jinchuriki clutching a weapon that one of the auto ninja were wearing. Before I could move either into or out of the room, a surge of, what I can only describe as dark chakra came from the roof, and the crumpled body of the auto ninja fell past the window. Trying to understand what just happened, I took a couple deep breaths, but before I could move from the doorway, the missing Jinchuriki came in through the window, tells me to make sure they are not disturbed until dawn, and then climbed into bed and fell asleep. The Hokage drew heavily on his pipe, so, who wants to try to kill the two demon freaks now? When no one raised their hands, he nodded. As I was saying, even after Lee showed us what we can do if we really try, he collapsed and Gara was able to reach out with his jutsu for one last attack, when Naruto threw orbs of fire from his hands, and landed between the two weakened fighters. His voice was off, and he called Gara by the name Shukaku. He refereed to Lee as an it, but would not allow Lee to come to further harm because, and I quote, it is of the village, and the village is under my protection. It would seem that the Otto ninja was aggressive against them, and because he was not of the village, he was crushed by the one-tailed biju in use of the Suna ninja's body. The murmurs returned. The stoic Hyuga flinched, like he want to make a request or demand even. Of course, in the morning, after they are fully rested, I am going to ask Yamanaka-kun to walk with Naruto, as we inspect the seal. After all, the safety of the village and its people are our highest priority. Ibiki, triple the guard around the Uchiha and the Jinchuriki. The Hokage stood, stiffly. Lords, ladies, I go to rest tonight. Please make appointments for to meet with me so we can arrange a better defense for the coming month. Good night. And he was gone. As the dawn peeked over the sleepy village, many clans were getting ready for the new day. One was the Yamanaka clan. Inoichi was finishing up in the back garden, before he washed up and headed to the hospital to see the Jinchuriki. Ino and her mom were eating a light breakfast, before opening the shop. As Ino got up and collected the dishes, her mom retrieved a hand-carved box off the top shelf. A pin prick and a blood smear, and the box popped open. The scroll cradled within drew Eno's eye. A drop of blood please. A kanai from her hip, a prick of her thumb, and a smear on the bud on the end of the scroll. Their hearts beat away the time as the blood smear was absorbed into the wood. Just as mother was about to declare that Eno was not strong enough in her bloodline. Dot the bud bloomed in a rose. A rose? She gets the rose, and the mindwalker gift, and I was limited to the prim rosé? Mother muttered, clearly upset about something. After a few minutes of ranting about the unfairness of the fates, mother calmed down enough to explain. The rose is the strongest of the flower-based jutsu. It covers all things rose. 
This scroll will guide you in ways that I cannot. I do know the theory behind many of the jutsus you will be learning, so if you have any questions, do come ask. Taking the scroll, Ino kissed her mom on the check and ran to her room to read the scroll. Naruto and Gara awoke about the same time. Naruto grunted, good morning, in the way that males the world over understand, but females find annoying. He frowned at the mush that the hospital delivered. Why they could not serve ramen was beyond him, but he was hungry so he reluctantly dug in. Gara did the same. When they were finished, Naruto was reclining back, he gave it 20 minutes before he would be bored enough to try to make a break for it, but he needed a few minutes to, recon, the security measures Gigi Sama had in place this time. As he leaned back into the pillows, his mind was drawn in and down. He landed on the mesa within. Akit. The Kiyubi was dressed in a new kimono of Sakura pink with snow lilies. Good, I need you to arrange a few things. There will be four for tea this morning. Then I need you to link with the Jinchuriki from Suna and open the way here. As the greater beast, and the beast of the host village, it is my, our duty and pleasure to host the meeting of the Jinchuriki. The teapot returned to the table, along with four cups. The number of cushions doubled. Anything else? Some cakes or biscuits would be nice. As a place of cookies and tea cakes wavered into place in the center of the table. Now listen carefully. The way to open the gates to allow the four of us to meet. First sit, knee to knee. Interlace your fingers of your left hand with that of his right. He will do the same. Once you are ready, push your chakra out your left hand while you let the his chakra in through your right hand. Allow his chakra to mix with yours as you push it out your left hand. It will take a few minutes, but once the mix reaches a certain level, the gates will open and the four of us will appear here. The lady grinned like her beastly form. If you do this right, I know a little Kunoichi who would just squeal and faint if you asked to try this. Anyone can do this. Can more than two people do this? Naruto's hopes rose. Maybe Sakura would like to see the Kiyubi. One non Jinchuriki per Jinchuriki. If all of us got together, there could be outer circle of 18 and an inner party of 27. A dream look came over her face, as her grin grew more. Evil, lustful. Ah. Dot the orgy we could throw. Then she began to drool. Ah, Kiyubi? Naruto wanted to run, but did not know where to go? With a great show of will, the Kiyubi shook herself and resettled her kimono. Still here, Kit? Go. Get Shukaku and his host. She clapped her hands and Naruto jerked awake. Naruto jerked awake. He looked around. He had been gone seconds. Gara was watching him from hooded eyes set in dark circles. Hey there. How you doing? My name's Naruto. Gara just blinked. I am okay. Did you sleep okay? Naruto tried another track. Gara grunted. It was okay. Naruto nodded. Okay. That's good. To do this thing, we have to be sitting knee to knee. Your bed? Or the floor? Naruto cocked his head. Gara grunted and slid to his feet and stepped just short of the center of the room. Floor is best. Two guys in bed. Naruto nodded, as he bounded to the spot just short of colliding with Gara. As one they dropped into a cross-legged position, knees touching. Reaching out, as they locked eyes, they interlaced fingers and gathered a small amount of chakra to begin the merger. At first Gara's chakra burned like cold fire, it had the texture of coarse sand, but as it mixed with his own chakra, it first left him feeling tired but quickly grew to warm and energize him in ways that were unknown to him before. As he watched Gara, he saw the boy, who was just a few months older than him, undergo the same experience. The chakra began to swirl faster and faster, until it was no longer under their control. Just when there was no way stop the exchange of chakra other than to break contact, both boys lost their hold on the surface world, and fell within themselves. On the mesa in Naruto's, mindscape, four figures took shape, or rather three took shape before the fourth, as she was already there. Naruto in a silk copy of his eye-burning orange jumpsuit. It was thin, like what an orange copy of what Kakashi wore minus the vest. Only his footwear and hite were blue instead of orange. On his back was the Uzumaki swirl. Gara was in his desert robes and harness, but the gourd itself was missing. His eyes were flashing about in all directions. The third was a heavy set male in monk's robes. In his left hand, he carried a staff with five rings through a loop on the head. Each ring was of a different color, a different metal. In his right hand, he had a sake jug, with the cork in. He was bald with a long Fu Manchu mustache and bread. 
He was shaded around the eyes like Gara, but the eyes themselves were golden, and sparkled with fun and mischief. A large and fluffy, striped tail rode high and dragged behind him. Shukaku, it has been too long. Kiyubi stepped forward and kissed the old monk on the checks. The monk grinned, as his right hand creased the left hip of the female, gripping her butt before stroking her tails. Too long is an understatement, my love, as inadequate as my comparing your beauty to the highest standards of the mortal world. As she blushed, he claimed her lips in a kiss that no monk had any right know anything about. Both boys shared a nervous look before looking out over the vista. Every few seconds Naruto would sneak a peek over his shoulder, before flushing and looking forward again. After the fifth glance Naruto snapped. If all you wanted was face time, you did not need to include me and Gara. With a start, both Biju sprang apart. Little imp. You need to teach him some manners. Shukaku rumbled. Kiyubi just laughed. My kit has a few things to learn, but here, he is stronger than me. Let us have tea, and talk. She waved at the table and scattered cushions. You do all of this? Asked Gara. Odd at the scale. Yeah, it was not that hard. Naruto was confused. Do not give him a hard time, nor yourself for that matter. The monk eased his bulk down onto the cushions around the table. His bloodline is stronger than yours. His father was a god among mortals, and his mother was the only thing his father feared. I think he was treated the same basic way you were, but more hate than fear. Also, he had a good seal master, where our seal was flawed from the beginning. He flicked a hand at the tailed lady. Kiyubi here adjusted it for us. That was why we were able to sleep last night. Using his tail as backrest, Shukaku snagged a cookie from the plate as he waited for Kiyubi to pour the tea. The monk eased his bulk down onto the cushions around the table. His bloodline is stronger than yours. His father was a god among mortals, and his mother was the only thing his father feared. I think he was treated the same basic way you were, but more hate than fear. Also, he had a good seal master, where our seal was flawed from the beginning. He flicked a hand at the tailed lady. Kiyubi here adjusted it for us. That was why we were able to sleep last night. Using his tail as backrest, Shukaku snagged a cookie from the plate as he waited for Kiyubi to pour the tea. Are you really that much stronger? Gara asked Naruto as they sat at the table. Define stronger. Naruto shot back at him. If we were to fight, here, I might win, but out there. I have no great element attack, like you used on Lee. You would kill me in few minutes in a head-to-head -head fight. If I used my ninja training, used my pranking skills, and everything. Naruto thought about it, running the fight through his head. I would most likely lose the battle, but you would fall victim to the rigors of chakra exhaustion, and I would win the war. And that is just as is. Naruto just awoke a bloodline yesterday, when I moved to alter your seal. Give us a month, and the two of you would be matched, more and he could beat you in a fair fight. Kiyubi grinned, showing of her pointed fangs, but then Tanuki and Kitsune never fight fair. You enter combat against us, you have asked to have your ass handed to you. The monk nodded, the only one to have beaten us, was Nibi, the two-tailed cat. She was more canny than I was, more level-headed than Kiyubi, and able to outmove us. Looking at his host, never piss off a cat. They are always watching, waiting, and can and will wait years for their revenge. Shit. Hope I can find something to protect me from Tora. Naruto was wide-eyed. Koo koo koo, Kiyubi chuckled. But remember that last night we had? I still have yet to get that last kink out of my tail. Shukaku grinned. The only time she stopped yowling and mewling was when her mouth was full. He looked at the hosts. Too bad both of us only have males, or I would ask that we try to recreate that night. He reached out and stroked her closest tail. No. Naruto yelled, pointing at the massive monk, not you too. What? Gara asked, frowning. Clearly he was missing something. Inoichi poked his head into the room. Seeing the young nin sitting on the floor, fingers linked, eyes locked and glazed, he frowned. Turning to the anbu beside him, Send word for the Hokage and the two Janin sensei for these genin. I do believe they will want to see this. Then he entered, and sat on a nearby chair. Five minutes later the door opened, as the Hokage led the two Janin into the room. The old man cocked his head to the side, then straightened up, ah! The Jinchuriki mind link. Not a true jutsu, but a limited form of communication. A very primitive form of the mind walking that you do, Inoichi-kun. Have you tried to enter? The blonde nin shook his head. 
With all that chakra swirling around, no idea who I would catch on to. Better to wait until they drop out. And from the looks of things, it is going to be a while. The Hokage nodded. Turning to Kakashi, I take it you were training Uchiha. Do you have someone to train Uzumaki? Kakashi nodded. I asked Ebisu to help the Gaki, but he is not skilled in dealing with a challenge like Naruto. I think I need to ask you oversee that he gets some training. The Hokage grunted and nodded. Then the three leaf ninja, as one, pulled from Veri's pockets, a small orange book. The Hokage claimed Naruto's bed, as Kakashi leaned against the wall beside the door. Baki blinked twice, then moved to sit on Gara's bed, and pulled his own book from inside his vest. No. Naruto yelled, pointing at the massive monk, not you too. What? Gara asked, frowning. Clearly he was missing something. My host is a little sensitive about certain behaviors. Something fairly common among the Jinchuriki in general. Either as preset condition, to offset our openness, or to rebuff the advances of the over-easiness of possible breeders. Kiyubi answered as she filled her cup. Shukaku snorted. More like our openness is in response to their stoic behaviors, in response to overzealous pursuit by the unworthy. My last three were celibate monks. No sake, no females, no pleasures of any kind. Kiyubi grinned and patted the hand of her host. My last host was this one's mother. A real adversion to perversion, but once his father proved to be worth the time, she used him heavy and hard. Naruto was shaking. Please stop. Choose another topic, please. Next month, sand and sound will attack Leaf. Gara spoke quietly. The case cage has declared it, but it was not my father. Someone else was wearing his skin. Skin based jutsu. That snake. Suddenly the calm and collected lady was a massive fox with nine tails flickering madly behind her. Host. Make him pay. Return tomorrow. Then she threw everyone out of her space. Suddenly Naruto is sent rolling across the room to crash into the wall, under the bed. Gara is just knocked over onto his back. The chakra dome that was swirling about them flashed and burned out. The four adults blinked, as they tucked their books away, and focused on Gara. From under the bed, Naruto snorted. Shikamaru is correct, females are troublesome. I just hope to find one that is worth it. He spent a few minutes crawling out. Looking at Gara, repeat what you just said in there. All of it. His eyes locked onto the Suna Janin. Next month, during the finials, sand and sound attack the leaf. Gara sat up slowly. By command of the K's cage, but not my father. Somebody wearing his skin. Gara looked at the Hokage, skin based jutsu, called a snake, before we were thrown out. Baki had lost all color in his face when Gara had mentioned the sand and sound, turned green at the mention that someone was wearing the K's cage's skin but he made no move towards any of his weapons. The leaf ninja showed minor interest in the news of the attack, but what really got them was the snake comment. The Hokage cleared his throat. Baki-kun. I am going to have to ask you to sit with Ibiki-kun for a few hours. This is a heavy issue here. If Orochimaru is involved, then both of our villages are in trouble. My genin. Until this matter is resolved, they will be taken care of, but no harm will come to them. The Hokage smiled at Naruto. Naruto-kun, my boy, you will be in charge of the team from Suna. Show them around the village, where to eat, where to train, things like that. Reaching into his robes, he pulled out a roll of Ryo. Take this with you, keep the recites. The boy nodded eagerly, ready to be off to show new friends about the village, but something caught Kakashi's eye. Naruto, what is that? In a blink, he was across the room, picking up the sound arm tucked under the pillow of the leaf Jinchuriki. Ah, that. Naruto grinned, as he scratched the back of his head, no idea, really. Just had it when I woke up this morning. The Hokage frowned. Last night, a mangled body was found on the ground outside this room. It was the sound nin, but for you to have that? Gara cocked his head to the side, as if listening to a for off sound. I am told that his biju wanted him to have it, something about better chakra control. The Hokage nodded. Take it with you, and when showing the Suna team around, swing by the last Kanai weapon shop. The weapon masters there would like to see that, and admire the tools of the trade of our guests. Yamanaka Inoichi made a move as to cast his jutsu, but Naruto waved his hand. Not advised, Yamanaka-san. She is pissed. Walking me right now will get you shredded. After lunch, 
I will see if she is up to a talk. Deal? Deal. Ramen? Naruto grinned, caught the gauntlet tossed by Kakashi, and led Gara from the room. The Hokage looked at Baki, we figured that Orochimaru was going to attack the village, but we had no idea of how. What can you tell us? Orochimaru is the self-proclaimed Otokage. Baki sighed. Some time back, he invited the Kaze Cage to his village, to talk about concerns to both our villages. The Kaze Cage came back normal, but an Anbu that was watching him died a week later. No one thought they were connected, but now that I think about it, how he died seems snake-related. We are in for some troubling times. Inoichi spoke quietly. The cheery blonde was all but bouncing around as he showed his new friend about the town. Twenty minutes after leaving the hospital they arrived at the hotel where Gara's brother and sister were staying. When they came down, they frowned at the blonde. What is he doing here? The puppet user asked. He will be showing us around the village. Gara spoke quietly. Baki is being questioned about the planned invasion. As far as we are concerned, it is called off, seeing as that it was not father who ordered the attack. They think it was someone they are calling Orochimaru. Of the Sanin? The wind user asked. Okay who are you and what did you do to our Gara? Shut up, or I will kill you. Gara snapped, then smiled, is it not a wonder what you can do when you get a full night's sleep? I feel fully rested. The older two of the sand children twitched and moved away from their creepy little brother. I thought we would start with a quick bite of ramen, then we could wander the markets, I need to stop off at my preferred weapons shop and turn in this thing. Naruto held up his new sound gauntlet. Hey, isn't that the... The pajama-wearing, kitty-eared male paled as the everyone looked at the metal tube in the blonde's hand. Yeah. It'd probably be best not to think about that too much. The official version is that it was a gift from the Auto Nin sometime last night. Naruto scratched the back of his head. Anyway, ramen awaits. Oi. Old man. New converts for ya. Naruto hopped onto his stool as the Suna team looked about the small hole in the wall eatery. I think I will start with four beef please. Turning to the redhead next to him, what do you want? Gara looked the listings over, I think I will have the miso, please. Tamari had the tofu and Konkuro had a pork not bad for mid-morning snack. As the four young ninja wandered through the village, Temurai and Konkuro noticed the hostile glares the citizens would throw their way as they walk along the street. But they also noticed that the glares were not directed at them, but at their guide who was ignoring them. Oi, Baka. Konkuro interrupted Naruto as he was sprouting off about some random fact on some random feature of the village. Why do the villagers seem to hate you? Naruto stopped and looked around as the villagers kept on doing as they were doing, ignoring the kid as long as he was not in their way, frowning or glaring at him if and when their eyes drew across him. Oh, that. Mostly the same reason you two are always keeping an eye on where Gara is at all times. Naruto rubbed his belly, while I am not as dark and destructive as Gara is, was, I do not think Gara is feared for destroying half of the village. Not half of the village, no but since the age of five, I was killing assassins and versus ninja or villager about once a week. Our father feared me, as I had ripped my way out of my mother, killing her in the process. Since the age of three, I have had troubling sleeping. Mine kept muttering in my head. A poor seal in the act of being sealed before birth caused us great discomfort. Last night was the first real sleep either of us had in the last 13 years. Naruto bumped the door to his favorite weapons shop open with his hip as he was telling of how he once faced off with Zabuza, the demon of the mist. Seeing that the counter was not manned by the old retired ninja that owned the place but rather by girl a few years older than him, he broke off the telling of his story. A girl that he saw just the other day. You. What do you want? The bun-haired weapon mistress seethed at the blonde Suna. Just following him. Tamari pointed at Naruto. Hey Panda-chan, is the old man in? I have a new toy he might be interested in. Also thought we would poke about the oddities. Naruto tossed the sound arm. Gauntlet on the counter as he ducked into the back racks of the shop. The three Suna ninja followed him. Almost immediately. Tamari spotted two small iron chakra metal war fans. 18-inch fins that with a flick of the wrist snapped into a crescent blade. They were wicked, sharp, and light. She smiled, she found her latest toy. Gara found a pair of gauntlets that were little more than sealing pouches, but when he inspected them with his sand, he found that they combined, held more than his gourd. Just what he needed, more sand carriers. And a bottle of toad sake, and our life is good. 
This time, next year, and you will need to include a female. Gara grabbed his head. At least the voice was no longer crying out for blood. Now it was just sake and women. Naruto found a pair of tantos, that slid into different ends of the same sheath. In truth he had been looking at these two knives for some time, just did not have the Ryo to cover the cost. But with everything going his way, he thought he could get them now. But it was Konkuro that found a real treasure, a top. A Suna top. A battle top, crafted by master puppeteers during the second war. Where a puppet just danced at the end of its strings, the tops were spinning death as they swept through the enemy lines. He gingerly picked it up. He ran his fingers over it. Trailing his senses and chakra strings over the polished wooden hull, a number of blades snicked out, as though he felt that the inner heroes engage. Had it been on the floor, it would have torn off and attacked anything in its path. Dropping the chakra strings, he watched as the blades retracted. As the four genin headed towards the counter with their treasures, Naruto was looking at what his new friends had found. He raised an eyebrow at the war fans in Temuri's hands. The gauntlets in Gara's drew a nod. Hey they looked cool. But the top got a frown. As the four genin arrived at the counter, the shop owner ducked out of the back room. He noticed the looks Tenten was giving Tamari. What's up? That one was the one who beat me yesterday. Tenten hissed. The old ninja looked over the three from Suna. A wind user, a puppeteer, and the red head, I do not recognize his style. I told you, there were flaws in your style. Let me guess, she blew your weapons aside as you threw them at her. He chuckled at her frown and wins. To master a weapon, you must first set the others aside. You cannot master all weapons at once. Pick one, master it, and then move on to the next weapon. Turning to his customers, now let's see what you got. Two chakra war fans, gauntlets of holding, a Suna battle top, and twin tantos. Is this going to be together or separate? I also brought that thing for you to poke at. Naruto pointed at the sound arm. Sweet. He picked up the gauntlet. Any idea what it does? Sound waves. A single punch stopped Choji's meat tank, and when he swiped at another and missed, he still cracked the guy's glasses. Naruto pipped up. Judging from the looks you gave everyone, Kei's Chan just took her windjutsu to the next level. Gara got some cool gloves, but Dolly Kun's confuses me. Gara cocked an eyebrow, as his siblings frowned at their new nicknames. The hand fans will act like smaller versions of that monster on her back, but with the proper application of wind chakra, she will be able to slice and dice her foes. The gauntlets your red-headed friend has can hold almost as much as that gourd on his back. The old ninja grinned as he leaned on the counter. Judging from his nickname, you know what it is he is carrying on his back. A sub-clan of Suna, during the second war, started using tops, instead of humanoid puppets. Nasty little things. Twice the range and speed of a puppet, limited only by its size and the craft master's skill and imagination. Got that little guy from the granddaughter of one of our veterans. Got a good deal on it, but never could get it to work. Guess my chakra control skills are too limited. Welcome young Kunoichi, if this scroll was lifted from the box, it means you. Have the gift to wield the female half of our family jutsu. While these arts are similar to the wood style, keep in mind they are completely different. In terms of power, they are using rope, where we use thread, with enough chakra. They can raise entire forests, where we can only do a family size hedge maze. Our art is divided into five subclasses lotus, water, and healing. Lily. Poison and pigmentation rose, combat and capture. Ivy. Containment and endurance poppy, medicine and sleep. Just because you can use on, does not mean you are denied the others, or that you can use them too. Each to their own skills and blooms. Eno snorted, and skipped down to the listing of the jutsu. Under Rose, she found three that she wanted to try out right away. Setting the scroll on the bed, she stood up, stretched, took a deep breath, and threw the five hand signs, Toge Barricado, Thorn Barricade. Inoichi returned home from his duties to the village, minor as they were at the moment. He wanted to take the time he had to hold his wife, seeing that over the next three weeks he was looking at long hours and short nights. He found his wife sitting at the table, the dishes from breakfast still in place. Flower of my life, he crooned, as he sat across from her. Are you okay, my sweet? I tested Ino today. To see if she was of the clan. She looked into his eyes, and he saw the unshed tears. But were they of joy? She tested of the rose. The full rose. 
I was just a primrose, and my mother was only a lotus. Is that pride or jealousy I am hearing? Inoichi asked. His wife sniffled. A bit of both. Our little girl is so strong. I feel that we are losing her. Toge Barricado. Thorn Barricade. Both parents' eyes widened, then grinned. Their baby girl just proved that she still needed them. She did something foolhardy. He smiled. Do you want to yell at her while I get the hedge clippers? Or should I do the yelling? As Naruto was leading the three Suna ninja out to an unused training area, a square rock was tracking him. Where are you taking us now? Konkuro asked, a slight whine to his voice. He wanted to try out his new toy. Naruto grinned at him. I do not know about you, but when I get a new toy, weapon, or jutsu, I like to go try it out, try to master the basics of it. I am taking you guys to an unused training area that has a sand pit and an old shed that you can use to target your top. Why a sand pit? Nako hooded boy asked. Gara might want to load up on his sand, unless he is just going to empty out his gourd. Naruto looked at the red head, who shook his head. Besides we only have a couple of hours, before I have to be back for lunch. Naruto shook his head, as he pulled a kanai and threw it at the square rock. Three raised eyebrows, became six as the rock exploded in a bloom of colored smoke. I told you the boss was watching. A high-pitched voice declared. Okay. So we totally need to improve our stealth skills. How do we do that? Snorted another kid. Are we done here? A bossy-toned girl asked, as the smoke cleared. Who are these kids? Konkuro asked as he made a fist. He so want to pop the kids, recognizing them from when they first came to town. They are the grandchildren of the Hokage and his team. Naruto sighed. I give you my rival for the title of Hokage, Konohamaru and his team, Moegi and Udon. Looking the young Serutobi in the eye, no special jutsus today. Okay, but you owe us a cool jutsu later. The goggled cadet put his fists on his hips. Deal. Naruto stood tall. Now go find Tora. If you can find him, hide him. It will annoy the genin that are hunting him. Okay boss, and the three cadets charged off into town. So the kids play with you? Gara asked. Not really, just Konohamaru. As the Hokage's grandson he is given some leeway, and he talks the other two into tagging along. They are the only ones that do not run screaming from me. Of course they do not know why I am treated this way, but they just figure it is between the adults and me, and leave it at that. Besides, I showed Konohamaru my, sexy jutsu, a real Hokage killer, old man's words, not mine, and he has taken it to the next level. Sexy jutsu? Growled Tamari only to be used against perverts and over-stuffy elders. Naruto explained. It was the first real jutsu he got down. But seeing as you were with us, it was inappropriate for us to duel today. She snorted, and snapped her hand fan. Inoichi leaned on the door jamb of his daughter's room. He did not even try to hide the grin on his face. His loving wife was trying to cut her way to through the heavy bramble branches as Ino hung in their thorny clutches. And what did we learn from this experience? His tone of voice gentle and not mocking, but showing that he was amused. Ino snorted, do you mean, besides only practice my jutsu outside? She then grinned, now I can trap and hold targets like Shikamaru and Choji. And if I read the scroll correctly, I can add poison and other effects to the thorns of my toge jutsu. Her mother just shook her head and sawed through another branch. Inoichi then remembered something. I heard you're calling out the thorn barricade, try, toge rurisu. Ino looked at her father, then with nothing to lose, made the standard release hand signs and called out Toge Rurisu. Thorn release. As she flared her chakra, the brambled branches retracted into the walls they sprang from, dropping Ino on the floor. But Ino fell for more than one reason. A feeling that she had not felt for some time. She was very low on chakra. Too low to do any more chakra practice today. Thanks, Mom, Dad. I think I now need a nap. She climbed onto her bed, picking up the scroll, and tucking it under her pillow. She was asleep in seconds. Inoichi helped his wife to her feet, and cuddled her as they watched their baby girl. No matter how strong she gets, she is going to need us for some time. How did you know that would release her, and why did you wait until I was halfway to her before using it? It is something I saw Shikaku do when we first started out. It was a wild guess if it would work, and I just remembered it right before I told her about it. He kissed her, I swear to you, my love. Okay. Don't you still have to see that Uzumaki boy? She pulled away. Go. See to him, 
I will run the store, while our Heim sleeps. Go. He grinned, as he headed out for some ramen. Ibiki asked some questions, Baki answered. They sipped some tea. The tea was laced, and strong. Ibiki asked some more questions, Baki answered the same. At an old training ground, one that looked abandoned, four young genin were practicing their arts. Tamari was dancing about waving her fans, causing many trees around her to lose their leaves as the wind from her small fans buffed and swirled about. Gara sat in a sand pit as the sand danced around him. Naruto sat on a flat stone in the center of the field, focusing inward. But it was Konkuro that was causing the most damage. His little battle top would spin and drive towards his target, an old shed, small ugly blades shredding the lower boards, before turning and driving back to him. The first few times he had to jump out of the way, but he quickly learned to tilt the inner gyroscope while mastering the throttle control. Gara was infusing the sand around him with his, and his alone, chakra. The sand in the gourd was a mix of the tanuki's chakra, Gara's chakra, and the blood of his fifty or so, victims, he would need to clean it later, but that required a few hours, and controlled running water. Naruto was in his mind. Naruto was in his mind. Naruto sat at the tea table as the, now, small vixen ripped and tore a pillow in her teeth as her nine tails snapped and furled the air about her. As she would finish shredding the pillow, Naruto would wave a hand and repair all the damage. After killing and disemboweling the pillow for the fifteenth time, she turned and glared at him. That is most unhelpful. I am not trying to be helpful. I am trying to get you past the rage and into a clearer set of mind. We have a big day. Among our basic training in my new bloodline and the Foxfire, we have a lunch meeting with Yamanaka Inoichi, and I need to learn the basics of these beauties. Naruto pulled his new knives out. Pretty. Okay. I will tell you, your bloodline gives you the ability to focus fire and spirit into a proto-element called foxfire. She closed her eyes, and reformed into her, human, form. As the silk of her kimono rippled into place, she knelt on the cushion across from her young host. As to you using it, I doubt you will be able to manifest the green flame until our seal is corrected. You will also want to learn fuenjutsu. Your father was a master of the seal, in fact he designed this one that holds me here. His master taught him the basics, and should be able to teach you the same. She cocked her head. If I know the old peeper, he is going to want you to sign the toad contract. Once you get the seal adjusted, I will be able to offer you the fox contract. With permission of the great boss of the toads, you will have two summon contracts. A very rare occurrence, as most beasts do not like to share summoners. Sweet. When can we start? We need the seal realigned first. Then you will need to improve your chakra control. With control and proper alignment, we can take things to the next level. She blinked, then smirked. I got an idea. You can still pull a clone or two, correct? At his nod, if you alter the hand signs in this manner, she flipped through a few hand signs, you can summon me as a shadow clone, and still control my actions, by dispersing me when I get out of line. I will also only have the chakra that is given to the clone. Naruto grinned, as he faded out. Grinning, Naruto broke to the world around him. Gara was lost in a minor sand vortex, his sister was dancing three feet in the air as the air currents pulled at her tresses. Konkuro was holding the battle top ten feet before him, at chest level, as it spun blades in both directions creating both lift and thrust. Naruto clapped his hands, disrupting the the discipline of the sand trio. The sand was sucked into the gauntlets, as the vortex crashed. The kunoichi landed lightly on her feet, but her hair was a mess. But the top. Dot the top darted across the field, and bit deeply into the stone under the Kiyubi Jinchuriki, causing it to explode. The young blonde tumbled through the air to land in lump at the Kunoichi's feet. Ah. Naruto grunted before kipping to his feet. Okay, who is up for lunch? He stopped and frowned before working through the hand signs for his new clone. As the smoke cleared, a redhead of his size and basic build was at his side. Baka. She punched him in the head. Tell me when you are going to summon me. She smoothed her kimono down, and adjusted her obi. Now you said something about lunch? Rubbing his head, Naruto just grinned and led the way back into town. The Hokage sipped his sake from the small bottle, as he sat across from the Jonin Baki. Baki sipped his tea. Gah. This tea tastes nasty. How much more of this laced tea, do I need to drink? He eyed the sake in the Hokage's hand. Following his line of sight, Serutobi Hirazan sighed, 
Then passed the man the bottle. Why did you tell us? Why not try to conceal this? Baki took a sip from the bottle, swished it about to rinse his mouth out, then swallowed. I agreed with the case cage's reason for the assault, but not the means of the attack. We are being slowly choked off by our daimyo, who is using your village to do our work. Over half of our contracts this past year were given to your village instead of ours. Serutobi frowned. We were told that your village did not have the manpower to do the jobs. We were told by the wind daimyo and his agent that the case cage was overworked and needed us to handle the overflow. All contracts were handled by the elder council. I will be taking steps to correct this. Me and the fire daimyo. The redhead clone triggered Gara's senses. There was something off about her. Of course there is. Kiyubi Chan is using the Biju Cage Bushin. Shukaku's deep voice grumbled in his head. Like when he used to hear the whispering of Mother. While you cannot use the Cage Bushin yet, you can and do use the Suna Bushin. I have a variant that you might get a kick out of. I refer to it as Biju Suna Wamoho, Biju Sand Mimic. It would give me the basics of a Suna Bushin, but allow me to embrace our elemental jutsu as needed. The Biju rattled off the hand signs. Gara flipped through the hand signs and slammed his palms into the sand pit he was standing in. Biju Suna Wamoho. Biju Sand Mimic. The sand of the pit slowly gathered, condensed as it grew, and shaped itself into a monk that looked a lot like a black haired Gara, complete with the kun mask about the eyes. Tamari and Konkuro just looked at one another, then shook their heads. Having just met the blonde Jinchuriki, they did not know what was going on. But they knew something was off with their little brother. He was not as crazy, or as bloodthirsty as he was just yesterday. Yesterday when the blonde had touched him. Touched him with green fire in his hands. She was hiding. She was hunting. She was good, almost as good as her prey. Over the last six years, she had improved her skills. First there was basic skill. Her shaded, yet worn clothing allowed her to blend into the shadows. Her practiced movement allowed her avoid catching the eye of all but the most focused of watchers. Second there was chakra control. She was so locked down, a newborn was brighter than she was to the family dojutsu. It was one of the reasons the elders thought she was weak. Third, there were the extras. Sent, an old undershirt of her prey to confuse yet his nose if she was ever caught up wind of him, and so on. Lose, once black, pants hung from her hips, the stolen tea, swiped from his hamper, replaced each week with the shirt she stole the week before a tight weave fishnet top over the top of the tee. Her sandals and hite were the only thing that she did not change when she dressed to go hunting. Aguchi blades were strapped to the inside of her forearms. Her hair was pulled back into a tight bandana, and a pair of dark shades covered her eyes. This day found her crouching behind a tree that the kunoichi from Suna was waving her hand fans at. As the winds picked up, she was thankful for the shades, as the wind blew her scent away. Her prey was on a rock in the middle of the field. The trio from Suna were about, seeing to things that concerned their personal jutsu. She could not get closer, but did not need to get closer. He seemed to be praying. Pray, praying, she grinned at little joke. Both her prey and the redhead were silent, not moving. They had been like this for just short of an hour when Naruto clapped his hands. The sharp retort drew the attention of everybody about him. The sand storm around the redhead was sucked into the gauntlets on his wrists, as the vortex crashed. The kunoichi landed lightly on her feet, but her hair was a mess. The hand fans snapped shut and vanished up her high rolled sleeves. Hanada nodded, in silent praise of the skill of hiding things in sleeves that, short. But the top. Dot the top darted across the field, and bit deeply into the stone under her prey, causing it to explode. She caught her breath, fearing for his safety then for the possibility that she was found out. The young blonde tumbled through the air to land in lump at the Suna Kunoichi's feet. Ah. Naruto grunted before kipping to his feet. Okay, who is up for lunch? He stopped and frowned before working through the hand signs for his new clone. As the smoke cleared, a redhead of his size and basic build was at his side. Her hair was long, down to obi. Her kimono was sky blue with blood orange trim. A white obi encircled her waist. Baka. She punched him in the head. Tell me when you were going to summon me. She smoothed her kimono down, and adjusted her obi. Now you said something about lunch? Rubbing his head, Naruto just grinned and led the way back into town. He had not taken two steps when the Suna redhead flipped through a few hand signs, and slammed his palms into the ground. 
As she had not learned to lip red yet, and the wind damage to her ears had not recovered yet, she missed the name of the jutsu. But she saw the sand in the pit rise up and form itself into a copy of the red head. The two eye ringed genin hurried after Naruto, while not moving faster than a simple walk. The last two exchanged looks and followed. But where the first four relaxed and eager to go, these two were worried. Did Naruto kun say lunch? And, Eguchi, knife, knives are small, with no guard. Used by geisha and assassins when they need a quick blade, concealed. Choji and Shikamaru were enjoying a quick lunch, quick by Akamichi standards, in an outdoor barbecue place that Choji's father owned a controlling interest in. It also happened to be two doors down and across the street from one special ramen stand. Choji was on his third order of meat when Naruto led a party of six into the ramen stand. Shikamaru was leaning back in his chair when he spotted the happy-go-lucky beast. To see him so chummy with the Suna team, triggered an alarm in his head. He had a thing for mysteries. First there was the two blondes, now there were two redheads, the puppet boy, and a young monk. Something was up. The blonde baka was almost as fun as watching clouds. Shikamaru signaled for another plate of meat, it looked it was going to be a longer meal than he first thought. Inoichi sat in the newer, larger dining area. The Nichiren ramen hut now could sit 8-8 eight, eight people with ease. Shortly before noon, he arrived and ordered a pork and veggie deluxe. As he sat nibbling his noddles, Naruto showed up leading a small pack of genin. Where he was expecting maybe four genin, six showed up. Where he was expecting two blondes, a redhead, and the baggy-dressed doll master, he got to an additional redhead and a monk. The two older Suna genin were talking, whispering about how different their brother was acting, and how did they want to play this one out. The redhead Jinchuriki was the quietest of them all, seeming focused on something else completely. The two unknown were talking like old friends or lovers that had not seen each other for years, years that were greater than they showed. As the six climbed onto the stools, Naruto sitting beside Inoichi, then the redhead female, the monk, the redhead Gara, the blonde Kunoichi, and the puppeteer, Inoichi frowned and looked about. Ah there she is. Had to really look for her this time. So, Naruto. You leave the hospital with one friend, and show up here with five. I am going to need details. Hey, uncle, give me six pork miso, and we will go from there. Naruto called out to Tuchi, before turning to Inoichi. I left with Gara this morning. We then collected his siblings and stopped here for a morning, pick me up. Then we did a little shopping, and practiced our jutsu. This lady is the one you wanted to talk to this morning. He waved at the redhead female beside him. A twisted cage bushin. The monk is Gara's. Companion. He looked up at the tall blonde. If you want to, walk, me still, I can dispel the cage bushin and allow you to inspect the mindscape. Then I need to find someone, she, called, the old peeper, and said something about a toad contract. Inoichi almost fell from his stool. What do you know of this, old peeper? Naruto shrugged, nothing personally. I am told he taught my father, and should be very interested in teaching me. While no one has named my parents, both. Companions talked about my mother and father. I was told my father was seen as a god among mortals and feared only my mother. That my father was the one to design the seal that holds my companion. That my father's master should be the one to inspect the seal, so as to allow me and my companion to work on our new jutsu and stuff. Inoichi frowned. Do you know who your parents are? No. Naruto hung his head, then perked up as the first of his bowls of ramen slid to a perfect stop in front of him. I want to know. I am dying to ask, Gigi Sama, when I see him. He snagged a pair of chopsticks, snapping them in twain, Itadakimas. Slurped up a big bite of noodles. After swallowing, his voice held a heavy tone. I also understand that if my parents were so great, that there are those who would seek to harm them by targeting me. If it is known who they are, were and my link to them, I could be looking at some strong ninja seeking to kill or hurt me. He looked Inoichi in the eye, his own burning with a flame of passion. The will of fire. I need to be stronger, not just to protect myself and those who are dear to me, but to uphold their names, and our family honor, our clan's reputation. He all but hissed. Gigi Sama. His voice lost all of his extra emotion, as he smiled his big cheeky smile, that of the village baka, Hokage Gigi will tell me when it is time. He has tried to help and protect me, but there is little he can do directly. But we are ninja. Only I attack head on. 
Naruto boasted with his grin and puffed out chest. Inoichi chuckled. Okay, I guess that you are stable. I will need to talk to your. What did you call her? Companion. Naruto slurped down the last of the bowl of ramen, before setting it aside and grabbing the next. Companion, I am going to need to talk to her. I would like to talk to Gara and his companion also. Inoichi leaned back, his eyes flickering over the assorted genin around him. I heard a rumor that the great toad sage, one Jiraiya, will be at the hot springs. You are looking for an older man with long white hair in a red vest coat. Odds are he is peeping on the women in the hot spring bays. Why not take the Suna Genin, the companions, and the Kunoichi hiding behind that tree? Inoichi pointed right at Hanada, and go to the hot springs. After getting your seal checked, practice water walking. You and Gara would benefit greatly from this skill. The girls will enjoy the water, the guys will enjoy the challenge of who is the better water walker. Okay. Naruto reached for the wad of Ryu in his pocket to pay for the meal, having finished all six bowls of ramen. I will cover lunch for all of us. Collect the kunoichi, and go. Invite Choji and Shikamaru with you, they have been watching us very closely. Inoichi pointed down the street in the other direction. The biju in their clone bodies were chatting away as they sipped sake and ramen, having given the daughter of the stand's owner a hairy eyeball. When they were questioned as to why they wanted sake with their lunch, Kiyubi Chan kept an ear pointed at her host as he chatted with the mind walker, as Shukaku kept an eye on his host. When the hot springs were mentioned, both Biju perked up, though for different reasons. As they thanked their hosts, the group collected themselves, only to notice Naruto was missing. Sniffing the air, both Biju, as one turned to look at a tree about half block away. There was Naruto sneaking up on a shadowed female, hiding in the shade of the tree. Then a new smell carried on the wind reached the noise of the kitsune. She grinned. With a twitch of her head, she lead the group to the tree. Hanada hid a bakery on her way to the tree where she could hide and watch Naruto. As she nibbled her dango and cinnamon buns, she watched the body language of her prey shift from his normal wild child, to a controlled defiance, to sadness, and back. This was one of the reasons she loved him, or at least thought she did. For some reason she blinked as the group were getting to their feet and saying their goodbyes to Yamanaka. She missed Naruto-kun stepping away from the group in general. She panicked. Where did he go? Her Bakugan activated almost on its own. As she scanned up and down the street for any sign of her prey, she felt a presence behind her. With most of her attention focused on finding her prey, she scanned the figure approaching from her rear. She froze. Her prey had gotten the drop on her. So, I am told you have been stalking me. His voice was calm. He has yet to recognize me. If I play this right, I can get away. But now her attention was on her six, not on the pack of genin that were approaching from the ramen hut. Ah, Kit. I see you have found her. I picked up her scent at the training grounds. The red-headed female stepped up close and sniffed. She even smells like you. Her eyes narrowed. I see, she is wearing your shirt to cover her scent. I see why Yamanaka-sama wanted us to take this one with us. I will be talking to this one. A hand was laid on the Hyuga's arm. I see trouble coming of this, the monk chuckled. But not for me or mine. This promises to be entertaining. Hanada swallowed. As she prepared to body swap out, Naruto-kun grabbed her shoulder. I think you are coming with us. Three of us have your scent, so we can track you, if you run. But if you come quietly, I do think we can have a good time. His voice was as gentle yet firm as an old stone bench. Hanada ebbed and fainted. Seeing the group with Naruto finish up with their lunch, Shikamaru pulled a wad of bills from his pocket and counted out his share of the bill in good tip. Choji did the same. As the group approached the hiding Hanada, Shikamaru frowned. He needed Naruto to not notice the Hyuga air crushing on him for another three days or he would lose out on a massive pot. When the poor girl fainted, Naruto swung her up bridal style and then lead the group towards him and his massive girthed friend. Hey Shikamaru, Choji. I have been advised to invite you to join us for some training at the hot springs while the girls get some soaking in. Naruto called out. Ebisu was looking for his student. He had been asked as a personal favor to show the demon spawn, the next level of chakra control exercises. The Gaki's influences on his prime student, the honorable grandson. Serutobi Konohamaru and through him the two grandchildren of the elder counselors. He was given the honor of instructing the three, 
and while easier to drive them on by comparing their progress to that of Naruto, it meant that he had to pay positive attention to the demon spawn and his exploits. He found the blonde troublemaker in a group, heading towards the hot baths, carrying the Hyuga heiress. As he moved to block the group, an Anbu caught his wrist. He turned to look at the female Anbu, cat. We follow. We watch. The boy is both entertaining and enlightening. He has shown, just in the handling of the trio from Suna, a clear mind of an ally and an innocence of a child. He has also shown a cunning and an eye for detail that matches if not surpasses most chunin. He has entertained the trio, acquired items that showed us just how strong they are, and something along the lines of what jutsu they use, and the skill they have mastered. The female redhead is a cage bushin of his, but he takes orders from it. The monk is Suna Bushin, of the male redhead. The blonde is skilled with wind jutsu and the other boy is a puppet user that we are told rivaling the skill of Sauri of the Red Sands of equal age. A male Anbu also a cat, took up the tail. He has surrounded himself with active ninja if things get out of hand, is guiding the outsiders to a place where they can be disarmed and their defenses stripped from them, should the need to act against them arise. The male cat put his hand on Ebisu's shoulder. We have received word that an old specialist will be at the destination that they are going to. Kakashi has already taken the Uchiha boy out to train him, but the Gaki is going to be trained under a different master. He was chosen by the Hokage. Why was I not told? Ebisu asked. He jumped to keep the group to in sight, the Anbu followed. Finding you was not our job. Nako whispered. But it was decided that we were to tell you if you crossed our path. For now, allow the boy to play the fool, as we watch. If anything it will allow you to find new ways to teach that group you mentor in the afternoons. Ebisu snorted and nodded. Naruto was not bouncing about, as he was carrying the heiress, but he was leading the way to the hot springs. Kiyubi had threaded her arm through Temeriz as they whispered back and forth about how cute the selected boys about them were. Shukaku was walking along beside Shoji, talking about barbecue sauce recopies of all things. Shikamaru and Gara were just silent, noting was needed to be said. Konkuro was busy pulling chakra strings through his top. When they had arrived, the two girls collected the passed out Hyuga from Naruto. Kiyubi leaned close to Naruto, in the bushes, you will find the peeping master. Tell him that the son of the fourth calls upon the toad sage. Naruto nods and heads to where Kiyubi pointed. Sure enough he found an older man sitting on a toad, peering through a hole in the fence. With the guys behind him, Naruto clears his throat, and in a pitched voice, are you the peeping master? Suddenly the voices in the pool area went silent, as a wave of killing intent washed over the assembled guys. Who wants to know? The old man turned his head. Naruto cocks his head. I was told to say. The son of the fourth calls upon the toad sage. That got the attention of the old man. Are you saying you are the son of the fourth? Naruto frowned. No, I have no idea who the son of the fourth is. But Kiyubi said that I was to tell that to the peeping master, and you are the only one spying on the women's bath. Besides, Kiyubi will be in there shortly. Shukaku nodded. And while she has no trouble sharing her body with others, she does like to be able to see who is watching her. Now the old man stood up and walked over to the blonde and the monk. A jinchuriki, and a biju in human form. He squinted, but there is no link between you two. His eyes flickered over the rest of the group, landing on the monk's twin. Ah, two Jinchuriki and. His eyes went wide as he tracked back to the blonde in front of him. Did you say Kiyubi would be in the bath? Naruto nodded. Looking into the sky, the old man muttered. Damn you Minato, not only do you saddle me with this burden, but then he disrupts what few pleasures I have left. Was it his imagination, or did he hear Kashina giggle? Okay boy, just what is it you want? I think first and foremost, Gara and I need you to look at our seals. Gara's has been altered to allow him to sleep, but it was altered to fix that flaw, and we do not know if that is the only flaw in his seal. Mine was altered last week by that snake Teme and it is discomforting to my biju. Naruto counted on his fingers, then there was something about a summoning contract with the toads. The toad sage was holding his head in his hands as Naruto started talking, but it raised slowly to look at the boy as he listed off his reasons for bugging the great sage. Toad contract. Who said anything about the toad contract? Kiyubi. Naruto answered with a straight face. I will need to talk to the boss if I am to have both contracts, but I was told my father was a toad summoner, and that it was something of a family thing. The toad sage's face returned to his hands, 
Are you trying to be this stupid? Actually, no, Shikamaru answered. Naruto is normally this obtuse. Then the boy frowned, are truthfully, this is pretty high functioning for him. He is pretty much just dumb thug. That red-headed girl with him earlier might have something to do with this. He stepped back as the old man was suddenly in his face. Redhead? Girl? The old man grabbed his shoulders, the men of his bloodline have trouble with redheads. Great trouble. His father was condemned by a redhead, his mother. His white head leaned on the Nara boy's chest, she culled him from my teachings, turned him into a pillar of the community. He would have been the greatest of. He took on a pose complete with sunset, the super perverts. Kiyubi Chan raised her head as she sensed pie, pervy intent. It is good to be back among the true believers again. What? Asked the blonde as she finished stacking her fans neatly in the corner. The true believers. Naruto kun's mother called them perverts, but they had a world view that we Biju enjoyed. In fact, part of the reason I drug you two in here is to evaluate your pure to perv ratio. You are a year or two older than Naruto kun, so I won't be up against any heavy moral walls. If you bend, Yami, a new playmate. If you don't, Yami, I don't have to share. Either way, I win. She flashed a vulpine grin at the blonde. Call me Kashina. It will really freak out the adults. What about her? Tamari pointed at the sleeping Hayuga. Are you going to evaluate her too? Kiyubi Chan, Kashina cocked her head as she looked over the sleeping girl. Most likely not, her I am just going to corrupt. First by playing on her desire for Naruto kun, then by teaching her to bind and train him. She grinned at the Suna blonde. I sensed your interest in the Nara boy. Be warned, the Nara have great minds, but it takes a strong willed woman to get them to move. Naruto kun says his hobbies include napping and cloud watching. His interests are to be unremarkable average, find a not too troublesome female and have two kids, and die of old age. Her kimono shimmered and faded as her nine tails flared. You can wake up now, Hyugaheim, and we can begin your training in claiming your mate. The Biju clone snapped her fingers in the pale eyed girl's face. The girl sat up. What do you mean, claiming? Again, the nude redhead grinned. Both of you, strip and join my in the hot spring. I will begin there. Naruto stood topless, channeling chakra through his seal array. Jiraiya frowned as he probed the seal, making a quick hand sign, and a blazing fingers plowed into the dark marks around the Jinchuriki seal. Naruto grunted from the impact. Kashina had just slipped into the water, her tails coiling about her waist, when she felt the disruption seal being dispelled. It caused a flux in her chakra which gave her a minor orgasm. Ah! Yes, I do enjoy being among the true believers. Now where were we? She ginned at the two nude girls across from her. Jiraiya grunted, Okay, now for Gara. Now this seal issue was more complex. Jiraiya had to reformat the seal without releasing the biju it held. Hold on boy, this is going to hurt. Those watching missed half the hand signs, but the look on the young Suna Nin's face as the pain flooded his system. The boy did not even have time to scream. Shukaku mirrored him, and as the reformat finished, his skin and face rippled in a full body shudder, both inside and out. Now that you boys are finished, Jiraiya turned back for the wall surrounding the pools. Not so fast, pervy sage. We need to learn the basics of water walking. Naruto crossed his arm over his bare chest. I was told you taught my father before me. I thought you said you knew. Jiraiya snapped around to face the blonde. Not his name, nor hers. I was told you were his teacher, something about a contract with toads, so we can talk about twin summoning. Naruto rubbed his brow, as if fighting off a headache. The only thing that has gone my way today was free ramen and the twin Tonto. Now she is plotting something with the Hyuga heir, something with the blonde Suna Kunoichi concerning Shikamaru, and then there is the plan she has for the one tail tonight. I do not want to know what that is about. All but Choji looked at Naruto. Jiraiya was caught between joy for the boy, and fear for what else the damned fox had in mind. Nara Shikamaru had a look of fear, of true terror, on his face. Gara and Konkuro were acting like overprotective brothers, before glaring at Shikamaru. Shikaku just grinned and smirked. How do you know those things? Shikamaru stammered out. The cage bushin, I often get their memories if they are not popped right away. When pervy sage fixed my seal, it rippled through my coils, and I got her memories from when I pulled her out up to when my seal was fixed. He looked at the fellow Genin. After all she is a modified cage bushin. 
Do you can use the cage bushin? Jiraiya asked. How many? I lose count after 200. Naruto tucked his thumbs into his waistband. I can do that 10 times before I feel a real drain. 20 puts me to my knees. But by the next morning I am good to go. Where everyone else needs a day or three. He looks to Gara. How many clones can you pull? I do not use clones. Gara frowned. Never had any need to. He waved at the monk. He is the first clone type jutsu I used. And it was a sand mimic jutsu. I am standing right here. The sand clone spoke up. Yeah. And you were thinking of merging with the wall over there and enjoying the view of the Kiyubi and the girls. Gara retorted. Then he blinked. How do I know that? Your more solid clone jutsu, often used for infiltration, allow the clone to disperse and the memories to return to the ninja, Shikamaru answered. It is similar to what Naruto got from the Kiyubi. When Jiraiya altered your seal, the two of you merged, if only for a second. Since it was not enough to dispel him, you, it only gave you, him the basics. Gara looked at the Nara boy. My sister has made commits about your tactical skill, and I noticed your look when Naruto was talking about her and plans for you. Why were you worried? Sand whirled about his fists. While your sister is cute, I find her being the daughter of the case cage, and brother to the Suna Jinchuriki too troublesome to be my first choice in a wife. That is not taking into account her personality. She might be a sweet girl, but as my wife. He put his hands in his pockets, shook his head and walked away. Lazy as a Nara. Naruto said. All the Nara males are like that. You want something done, talk to the women of the clan. Naruto looked to Jiraiya. Now if you could give us the basics of water walking, we will practice while you and Shukaku try to return to your sport. Okay, you know the tree walking? Jiraiya looked at the Suna Nin. Or in your case, wall walking. Where you just pour chakra into the soles of your feet to stick to the wall. Getting a nod from the assembled Nin. Too much, and you either stick, sink into, or it explodes. Too little and you slip and fall off, down. He turned and stepped on the hot water beside the group. With water, you need to control the flow of chakra. Too much and you disrupt the surface of the water, too little and you sink. Water is always moving. Even standing water moves. Nara Shikamaru frowned a bit, then stepped out on the water. He moved slowly, but soon he was beside the pervy sage. Yeah. Naruto leapt from the side of the pool, bringing his hands into the rat sign. He slipped right in. In over his head. Out he came, boiled bright red. Hot. He landed on the side of the pool, panting. Those around him but Choji and Gara laughed. Gara just grinned. He pulled off his gauntlets and his gourd, settled his robes, and walked out onto the water, sinking only an inch or two, but he quickly stabilized. Choji was just finishing his bag of chips, when Shikamaru smirked, from behind his back pulled out a large bag of fire-roasted barbecue chips, opened them, and tilted them as if to dump them into the water. Choji was at his side before the first chip shifted. You would not dare. The massive boy hissed. Look where we are. Shikamaru handed him the bag, now keep them dry. Konkuro strolled out onto the water, but then he already knew this skill, or rather it was easy for him, control is needed for puppet work, and he can dance his puppet around and around through any course maze you care to put in front of him. It took another three tries for Naruto to get it down. In doing so, he found he could skate along the surface and come to a full stop just by altering the chakra flow. Soon the four genin of the were skating about the hot pond. Shikamaru had moved off to the side, he had a few things to think through. Shukaku and Jiraiya had moved off to the side where they could see swimmers down in the river. The toad had already jumped back. It was carrying word that the Kiyubi Jinchuriki was asking to talk to the boss, something about twin contracts. Inoichi stood behind the Hokage as they stood on the roof of the tower. You are saying that the boy is stable? Yes, Lord Hokage. He is stable. While he has allowed the biju to walk among us, I sense no deception from either the biju nor the jinchuriki. The other two Suna ninja are weary of their jinchuriki, but I think it is more that he went from a killing machine to their little brother overnight. I have asked to talk with both biju and with Gara, but I cannot demand any action, as they are not of the village. And where did you send them? I told Naruto that he might find Jiraiya at the hot springs and that the Suna trio might enjoy the baths. He coughed. I also told the boy to take the Hyuga heiress and Shikamaru and Shoji with him. How did that go down? She fainted when he caught her, but last I saw of them, they were heading out with Neko's squad following them. The Hokage nodded. 
Kashina leaned back in the water. All that she was missing was a bottle of toad sake, and a boy toy to make her bath prefect. Turning her head to look at the Hyugaheim. So princess, just what are your plans for Naruto-kun? The girl flushed, and played with her fingers, I have no idea what you are talking about. Kashina chuckled. You have been spying on him for months now, if not years. And while you are a bit young, you are from the Hyuga clan. She sat up, her tails swirling the water about her hips. You need to move on your prey or your father will cave to the pressure of your elder council, and find you a husband that suits their purpose, that of the clan over yours. Reaching out, and taking the girl's hand, you have a small window of opportunity here. I know my host, he of the gentle heart, is not going to be limited to just one female. The look on Hanada Chan's face was both warming and frightening. I can drive him from the pink-haired banshee, but there needs to be a warm set of arms to catch him. A few of my fellow biju are in females, and I would like for Naruto to claim them as friends, if not lovers or mates. As a fox, we bond for life, but not just to one person. Naruto will be a great lover, husband, and father. But to limit him just to one female is wrong. Nani? I was thinking of offering him to the blonde Suna here, but her mind seems to be on the Nara at this time. I do not know. Tamari spoke up from her perch. Being of a desert culture, she was unsure of the water surrounding her. She was sitting on a rock, with her legs in the water. The blonde is worth while getting to know, but Nara Kun has an appeal to him as well. Well, as long you are on the fence, why not try out both? Ebisu watched as the group of males skated about on the water. Naruto was quickly moving on to the more daring moves, and falling into the hot water. He was grinning at the antics of the boy, and was thinking of pushing his charges to the next level. He had frowned when the boys had found the old pervert, but the Anbu had kept him from interrupting. Now the old man and the monk were off to the side talking and sharing a bottle of sake. Then the white-haired man snapped a rock at Naruto's head, the boy caught it out of reflex. As the old man was reaching for another rock a small toad popped into being. Ah, Sage Jiraiya. The small white toad with blue marking hopped up to the man. It extended its tongue to drop a small scroll. Boss Toad wants the boy to summon him. Have the boy sign that scroll. And cast the summon jutsu. It is a blood seal, super summon scroll. One time use. Nako lunged forward, grabbing the scroll. Not here. Not enough room. His voice hissed. Like I care. My job is done. The toad popped out. Jiraiya frowned. Then smiled. Hey brat, he yelled, got a new jutsu for you to learn, but we need a place nearby that has plenty of room. Hanada Chan was torn between running and hiding and following the advice of the tailed woman. She listened as the vixen chatted with Tamari, but she was watching Naruto kun with her by a kugan. She smothered her giggles at his antics, but she frowned as the group started to gather up their things. Ah, Kashina sama, the guys are getting ready to leave. Well, we cannot simply allow that. A quick hand sign, a small purple two-tailed fox popped into being in front of the red-haired woman. What do you want? It hissed. Then blinked, before rolling onto its back. Kashina just grinned. On the other side of that wall, you will find a white-haired man and a bunch of kits. Tell them, mistress asks that they wait. Go. The little fox scurried away. Let's get dressed ladies, males will only wait so long, unless something has been hinted at being offered. The three hurried into the changing area. As the boys collected their things, Naruto sniffed the air. Something was off but what he could not say. Turning about he came eye to eye with a purple two-tailed fox. Drawing his head back to get a better look, he snorted. You are the keeper, aren't you? The small fox asked. The one who holds the mistress both safe and hostage. I can honestly say I have no idea what you are talking about. But then I have been hit in the head many times and am known as the knucklehead ninja. Naruto answered calmly. If maybe you told me who it is that you are calling mistress, we can go from there. The small vulpine head cocked to the side, are you really this dumb? Naruto frowned as his fists landed on his hips. That is the second time today that I was asked that. Turning to Choji, who was closest, am I really that slow? Choji just shrugged and finished the bag of chips. Anyway, the small fox said as it hopped onto Naruto's shoulders, I was told to tell you that mistress wants you to wait while she and the girls get dressed. It draped itself along his shoulders, I think I want to see this. Okay. Naruto tried to shrug without moving his shoulders. Hey whitey, I think you are forgetting something. 
Jiraiya growled before turning on the spot, boy. I will have you know that you are speaking to the one and only great toad sage and super pervert. Jiraiya. You will show me the respect I deserve. So. Pervy sage, you do more than just peep on girls in the bath? The toad sage face planted into the tilework. Shikamaru chuckled. Naruto. You know that little orange book Kakashi is always reading? At the blonde's nod, they are written by him. Nara pointed with his thumb at the sage. Almost every male ninja above the rank of Chunin has a copy or two. If know you what to spot, you can see them. I tried to get one, but my mom found out and read me the riot act. Pops used the time to buy his copy and one for me, as a thank you. He frowned, I understood the story, but did not get the right understanding. Pop says that I need a few more years to mature my mindset. The monk turns to the old man. What book are they talking about? Jiraiya pulled a battered copy from inside his coat and handed it to the monk, who after looking about, opened to the first page and began to read. After turning the page, his hairless eyebrows lifted. Snapping the book closed, he tucked it into his robes. You will be getting this back, once I have secured a copy or two of my own. The two of them grin. And another convert. The toad sage thought. Just then the Kiyubi and clone led the girls from the bays. This time, Kashina took the time to arrange her kimono so that her tails were flowing behind her. She even had two fox ears on her head. Tamari had her hair out of its tails, just slicked back. Ah, toad sage. It is good to see you again. She leaned over and kissed his weathered cheek. I am so pleased that you are going to be teaching my host this month. Her grin was not so much evil as nasty. We would not want to deprive our great author of his research. But if Naruto-kun does not do so well in the third trial, you will never look at anything young or female again. Shukaku quick stepped behind Naruto. She once promised that to the three-tailed. He tried to peek on some young female, his eye burned itself out of his skull. Naruto shook his head to clear it, then stepped up to Hanada. Hanada-chan? Are you coming with us? If I am allowed. The girl tried to fade into her own shadow. Naruto reached for her arm, but due to her not wearing her jacket, his hand grabbed something else first. Everyone watching froze. Anko was escorting the Suna Janin Baki to join up with his team. While the man was being believed, he would still be watched. Checking in with the front desk of the Anbu HQ, the keep track of where certain people are during the day, the Hokage, the elders, made a guy, and of course Naruto. You never know when you might need to find, Hokage, track, Naruto, or avoid, Guy. She learned that the Anbu had tracked Naruto to the hot springs. Baki was still groggy but followed as quickly as he could, as Anko lead the way to the hot springs. They landed just as the boys began to collect their things. Turning to the Anbu beside her, report. The brat has gotten the basics of water walking down and learned that by adjusting the flow of chakra, he can skid and skate along the surface of the water. Tora answered. Shikamaru picked it up quick but then moved off to think. Choji has the basics down, but has yet to stop eating. Konkuro has been spending the last bit trying to undermine Naruto's control, and sink him. No idea what Gara is doing. And now? Baki slurred. Jiraiya just got a scroll from the toads, and Nako said if Naruto was going go summon it, they would have to go elsewhere. Tora looked at the Suna Janin. The ladies were in the bathes, but. They turned their heads just the three females arrived. Anko raised an eyebrow at the redhead's tails. Tora? Did you forget something? No, the redhead is a clone of the brats but he listens to it as if she was his sister. Anko frowned as pulled a kanai from under her coat, took aim, and... Naruto yelped as he drew his hand away. I did not mean to grab you there. He just knew he was going to get hit. Coo, coo, coo. The Kiyubi chuckled, I knew I liked you boy. Now Hinata-chan. What do you have to say about that? She suddenly spun and caught a kanai. If you want to play, sugar, you just had to ask. Kashina called out. I do know that to stand here with my ears and tails out. I am asking for rumors and gossip, but I will return steel with the same warmth and loving as I receive it. She dropped the knife, turning to the Hyuga heiress. Well girl, the boy just grabbed you. What are you going to do? Hanada chan swallowed. Nn Naruto. If you are going to TT touch me there, in PP public, you are going to have to learn to do it PP properly. She took his hand and placed it on her breast, reached up and pulled his head in closer, and just before kissing him, like this. She kissed him. It was more than a peek on the cheek, but no tongue. 
It lasted for a count of three. Like that. Then her eyes rolled up in her head, as she fainted. Shikamaru groaned. Well I am out of the pool. Looking at the drooling Hanada-chan at his feet, Naruto gave voice to the one thought in his head, what was that about? Jiraiya opened his mouth to answer, but Kashina spoke first. You are just going to have to ask Hanada-chan. No one here is going to risk my wrath by telling you. You will either find out on your own, or have to ask her. Now pick her up, and we can move on to the next activity you have planned for us. Naruto brought his hands together, rat sign, popping out three clones. Two moved to gently pick up the sleeping heiress. The third nodded and took to the rooftops. Naruto then led the growing pack of ninja to the nearest training field. It was a large cleared field with a small lake at the far end, surrounded by third growth trees. Once everyone who was in the group was in place, the watchers kept to the trees, Jiraiya squatted down, then motioned Naruto closer. Okay boy, the signs you need to know are, boar, dog, bird, monkey, ram. A drop of blood in these hand signs, slapping the ground, and you get. As the Sanin did as he was saying, a three-foot-tall toad popped into place beside the man. Now smear some blood on this scroll. The super summon scroll was spread in front of the boy. As the man waved the others back, focus chakra, mold the signs, slap the scroll. The clearing was filled with fog. When it cleared there sat the massive boss toad. Jiraiya, where is this pipsqueak you wanted me to meet? In truth, it was I that wanted you to meet the boy. Kashina stepped forward, splaying out her tails. The boy will have the kitsune contract. His father held the toad contract. You severed his father very well. I remember you from that night 13 years ago. I thought you and the sage would like the boy to sign your contract as well. She snapped her fingers and a five-tailed fox arrived cradling a heavy scroll in its tails. I am ready to commit him, and commit to him. Can you make the same offer? The oversized toad glared down at the redhead, who dared to mock him. Jiraiya. Does the boy have what is needed to serve and be served as a combat summoner? I do believe that he does. Sign him. The toad was gone. Naruto awoke to a pounding headache, a dry mouth that tasted like weak, weak old cheese, and a body that was stiff and aching like he had been pulled, pressed, and stuffed in a kanai pouch all at once. As his left hand rubbed his eyes, Blurry images of things he really did not want to remember flashed through his head, blurs of red hair, a dark-haired guy with raccoon eyes, of giggling, of. It all goes blank. Thankfully, he was in his room, the sun stabbing through the raggedy curtain and into his eyes. There is a weight on his right side, a warm spot. He turns his head and peers down, curled into his side as a small redhead. Blinking, Naruto tries to place this person. Oh, Gara. Oni-chan, don't leave me. Gara curled in tighter to Naruto. Ah, Gara? Naruto poked the younger Jinchuriki. Hey Gara, time to get up. Gara blinked and looked about. Then he noticed that he was so close to the blonde Jinchuriki. Closer than he had ever been to anyone in over six years. He pulled away, so as not to hurt his new friend with his sand. Then he noticed that he had no sand. He reached for it with his chakra. It stirred but it seemed to be holding a wall about them. Then the headache hit. The day before replayed through his mind, from when they left the sand pit in the training field to when the very drunk and frisky Tanuki collapsed into a big pile of sand, just a few hours ago. Clutching his head, the redhead groaned, if that is what I have to look forward to, I can see why the others were so. Reserved. Nah. From what Kushi Chan was slurring last night, that was just drinking. I think she has agreed that I am not going to be subjected to the orgy until I am sixteen or I make chunin. Whichever comes first. Naruto frowned. Just be glad that they were the ones doing the drinking last night. A quick flush of chakra and your system should reset. A rat sign as he gathered chakra. Then released it. Gara frowned and mimicked him. As the chakra flowed through him, the hangover was washed away, as he released it, like a wave washing over him, cleansing the top layer of his skin. Naruto nodded, now a quick shower, then dressed and then we can go find some trouble to get into. Naruto sprinted into his shower, hosed off and dressed in his orange tracksuit. Stepping out, he sees that Gara is already dressed. No shower. Sand shower. Gara answered. Granted, only I can do it safely, but it saves on water. Pulling on his new gauntlets he began to recollect the sand barricade from around the bedroom of the apartment. 
Naruto just nodded and set about working his new tontos onto his belt and getting the scroll pouch to hang properly. Once fully dressed, they made their way out the door. Right into Jiraiya. Ah, I see that the two of you are together. Good. And where are your? They disbursed last night after getting really drunk. Naruto scratched his head. Mine is sleeping it off in her cage. Gara turned to look at the blonde, cage? There was no cage when we. Naruto grinned. Next time you were over, look at the rim of the mesa. It was a cage in a sewer before Habi Teme spiked us. He frowned, I most likely need to go back in and see what the place looks like now. Jiraiya frowned at the two chatting away about Biju and containment. Deciding that the boys needed something else to talk about. Hey, what do you two have planned? Ramen. Naruto exclaimed. Then I need to find someone to teach me the basics of these. He drew his twin tontos from behind his back. Jiraiya's frown twisted. Let me see one of those. The blonde passed one over while sliding the other home. The sage shifted the blade about in his hand, testing the balance. He nodded. Half gram heavy on the back. Then his eyes widened. A chakra blade. A what? Naruto asked. Handing the knife back to the boy, a blade that is forged to channel chakra. Each element adds different properties to the blades they are channeled through. Come with me. He turned and headed to the Hokage Tower. Ino groaned as she rolled out of bed. Her massive jutsu yesterday was tiring, but the reaction headache was worse. After her nap, she a light soup, and straight back to bed. Collecting her new scroll, she headed down for breakfast. Three eggs, bacon, four slices of toast with jam, and two big glasses of juice. Then with her scroll, she headed out to where Shikamaru and Choji would be spending the day, cloud watching and eating chips. Tamari sat on the balcony of her room, working on the control of her new fans. The edges of the fan were thin, sharp, and straight. Yesterday, all she did was throw wind jutsus with them. She looked down from her ledge, and spotted a group of dancers, setting up on a stage. Three young ladies bowed to the civilians that were gathering. Then with a practiced snap of their wrists, silk fans exploded in their hands. The dance was primitive, basic, but the girls were only six to eight years of age. Tamari tried the moves from above, and found the forms both complex and yet simple. She frowned. She remembered a book and scroll shop. The blonde chatterbox had pointed it out as they were walking to the weapons shop. Dot now where was it? She gathered her small fans, but left the massive one in her room. She was safe from everyone but the higher ninja, and her rank and bloodline protected her there. As she stepped out onto the street, she looked about and was swept away in by the crowds. Konkuro sat in his dark room his puppet, Karasu, Crow, dismantled, and spread about him. His toolkit at his side, as he slowly took apart the top. He was learning the top the same way he learned his puppet, from taking them apart and putting it back together. Inside he found. Senbon shooters. Singles and volleys, empty, retractable blades, chakra metal, razor sharp. 3D gyroscope, in perfect condition, refillable poison bladders, needing to be replaced and a set of seals that he did not have the knowledge to mess with. Okay. Now he knew what he needed to do to bring Karasu up to the next level. Karasu already had Senbon shooters. Seeing as he was not attacking the village in a month, he decided to load the non-lethal poisons. He also reloaded the top. Karasu had blades, but not chakra metal. Now he had a reason to learn his elemental affinity. The top would be more effective when he knew that little nugget. Instead of using bladders, he used bomb spheres, and loaded three different colored smoke. If it came to true fighting, the smoke would be better at this time. He did not want to kill the bug user, nor to piss the guy off, so he did not use bug killer, but did plan on using a smoke gas that would repulse or repel the bugs. Sealing the top into a small scroll, he prepared himself for reassembling Karasu and pretending to be the puppet on Karasu's back. Sakura was heading to the hospital, to see those that did not make it out unscathed. Here is what she thought had happened. Lee was in bad shape, but it was just torn ligaments instead of crushed bones. Choji was suffering from internal bruising. Hanada was in for chakra coil damage, and in the hospital because her father openly did not trust the elders with her in that condition. Sasuke had been taken from the hospital in the dead of night by Kakashi Sensei. Kiba and Akamaru were in the Inazuka clinic, she would be visiting them later. Tenten, Ino, and herself were out with minor bruising and low chakra reserves. Shikamaru was most likely somewhere napping or cloud-gazing. 
Neji and Shino were home doing clan things. Naruto was off running around town with that Suna trio. Choji had been released with orders to take it easy. Hanada had slipped out, no one knew that she had been left in the hospital. But other than that, it was as she thought. Lee it turned out was under heavy sedation, he kept trying to get up and work out. Choji had eaten three standard hospital breakfasts and was still hungry. A medical scan showed that the best thing for him was a few light lunches over the course of the day, as his clan's bloodline turned calories not just into chakra, but also speed up their healing. No one who knew that Hanada was in a room at the hospital noticed that the shade of a girl had slipped out. It was not noticed until the evening rotation of nurses came looking for her that anyone knew she was gone. By that time the girl had followed the knuckle-headed ninja to the training field, to the noodle hut, been captured, converted, and groped. All in all, Hanada was having a good day. But Sakura was not. She was missing her Uchiha-kun. Her mother had yelled at her the last two days, about not being good enough for her Uchiha-kun, about how could she, the smartest girl in her class, be beaten by that loud-mouthed Baka that she called her teammate. In the end, she just needed to get out of the house, and what better way than to see those in the hospital. Hanada sprang up from her nest of pillows, panting. Her dreams were getting worse. This time, he had used her in ways that were not just humbling, but degrading. And, she had not only enjoyed it, had been begging for more and worse. She licked her lips, it was time to do something about it. A quick bath in her private furo, and she dressed in her clan robes as to her ninja gear. Signaling a branch member, are you doing anything at this time? She inquired. No Haim Chan. I require a message sent to Yamanaka Inoichi. I must speak with him at his earliest connivance. Your silence on this. And with a flick of her head, she scurried off to the breakfast table. The branch member frowned, then recalling the rumors about what happened yesterday with the princess's crush, grinned and hurried out to find the blonde Jonin. Entering the Hokage Tower Naruto paused, then snorted as he drew a kanai and chucked with a grunt at the wall. The wall sagged as the kanai pinned the cloth to the wall. You were getting better, but you guys were an inch off to the left. The cloth was pushed aside as the troop of cadets known as the Konohamaru Ninja Squad stepped forward. How did you get to be so good, boss? Naruto took on the Peter Pan pose. I am just that great. Nice guy pose, Datbeo. He shook his head. Really guys, it was just practice, observation, and running like hell when the Anbu caught me failing. Sue. More practice. Got it. The scarf-wearing kid took on the Peter Pan pose no girls around. Challenge you. Moegi bopped Konohamaru on the head, and glared at him. What? He looked at her, I do not count you as a girl, because you are on my squad. She snorted, in a ladylike manner. Naruto looked about, a sparkle in his eye. One on one, or three on three. Jiraiya and Gara had stopped to watch Naruto, neither was prepared for what was about to happen. Three on three, but you start as one, Konohamaru exclaimed pointing at his rival. As the four dueling, ninja, took the Peter Pan pose, Naruto and Konohamaru counted down, three, dot two, dot one. As one eight hands came together in the rat sign. Four puffs of fog, smoke. When the smoke cleared there stood two sets of three, naked, girls. Naruto had pulled two clones and done his blonde with pigtails and whisker marks, a redhead, and a blue-haired girl, all about the age of seventeen all sharing the same cloud cover. The KNS took it one step further. Konohamaru was a brown-haired girl, trying to hide in a towel too small to hide behind. Moegi was a red-headed female hiding behind two large feather fans, what was seen, seemed to be nude. Udon was raven-haired beauty trying to hide behind a scroll that slithered about her form. Jiraiya never had a chance. Ninja down. Before the whited pervert even hit the floor, the duelists had dropped their henge. As the five youngsters watched the sage spasm, a chunin with a medical badge stepped forward to check the old man's stats. What did you do to him? Sexy jutsu, Udon murmured shyly. The chunin froze, then turned to glare at the blonde. You just had to go teach that one, didn't you? Then the chunin froze again, the Hokage. From up the stairs a panicked shout rang out, Hokage is down, Kami help the Hokage. Naruto chuckled, two for three. The first time it was just a blood nose, but the last two times. Scratching the back of his head, how is Aero Sanin doing? Jiraiya snapped up as he dug a small notebook from under his vest coat. 
A few quick notes, and the notebook was put away. The Chunin snorted and walked away, as Jiraiya glared Naruto. That was low, Gaki. A jutsu like that could do a guy some real harm. You mean like to Gigi Sama? The scarfed boy asked, real panic showing in his eyes. Jiraiya frowned. Who? Hokage Gigi. Naruto answered. This is the honorable grandson, Konohamaru. Naruto clapped the boy on the shoulder. My rival for the next to take the title of Hokage. What I did alone, he does two years younger with the Konohamaru ninja squad. Jiraiya nodded as the information filtered through his mind. Six naked girls slows down the mind of any pervert. Sensei? And the Sanin was off and running, the five youngsters hot on his heels. Into the Hokage's office burst a panicked Jiraiya, followed shortly by two Jinchuriki and three cadets. Two Anbu and a medical ninja of Chunin rank knelt over a twitching Serutobi Hirazan, the blood spray covered half the room. The Chunin looked up at the Sanin. Any idea what happened? Was he using the viewing orb? The white haired man asked. He was. A female Anbu with long dark blonde hair held with ornaments spoke in hushed tones. The male bird masked male spoke in equally hushed tones, he cooed in excitement, ooed in awe, then screamed and had a massive spasm. Jiraiya started to giggle, then a full belly laugh, it got so bad he had to stagger over to the couch and dropped into the cushions. The Hokage just happened to be watching when two of his greatest ninja were dueling with non-combative jutsu. Jiraiya gasped out finally. The gaki over there, he pointed at Naruto and Konohamaru, they were using a non-combative kinjutsu. The medic ninja frowned, the dreaded, oiroke no jutsu, that did this. Ah. Naruto rubbed the back of his head, not exactly. What was began is the oiroke no jutsu has grown. I was using what I now name, Ananoko Doshi no Jutsu, seeing as there was three of me. And we were doing the, Puri Puri no Jutsu, a collaborative Jutsu. Konohamaru mimicked Naruto. Su. The Chunin medic looked about, six Oiroke no Jutsu, she asked. Six nodded back. Just then the Hokage snapped upright, call Tsunade. Tell her that. He noticed where he was, when he was. Oh well, never mind. Then he turned to glare at the boys who were dueling. Hey! Naruto pointed at the old man, if you had not been peeping on me or Konohamaru, you would not have been caught by the jutsu. The old man frowned, then it turned sour. I cannot argue with that. Then he noticed Jiraiya's clothes and he grinned, got you too, eh? Yeah, was dead center when your grandson challenged my student to a duel. A three on three. Jiraiya frowned, before craning his head to glare at Naruto, who won. Naruto frowned, you mean besides you and Hokage Gigi? Before turning to Gara, you were watching. Who completed the jutsu first? Finished forms? Gara frowned, you finished at the same time. They had better the henge, a bather, a fan dancer, and a librarian with a scroll. Gara turned his dead eyes on Moegi, avoid using that jutsu near my sister, she is a fan user. Then he frowned, or she might give you tips, once she learns it. He looked at the Hokage. She seems to have found an interest in your Nara Genin, and that, Kashina, was offering her tips on, tagging and bagging deer, and I do not think they were talking about four-footed animals. Flicking his thumb at Naruto, this delinquent was alone at the beginning, but only did three nudes with different hair color and missed. Both old men grinned and drooled. A tie then. The male Anbu with a bird mask stated, before his partner popped him in the shoulder. Naruto raised an eyebrow at Konohamaru who frowned, then nodded. The female Chunin medic and Anbu snorted, shook their heads and walked out. The male Anbu followed. After a few minutes Jiraiya shook his head clear. I came to test the boy's elemental affinity. Seeing as the cadets match the boy in their duel, how about testing them too? Then we can enter it into the files all at once. Okay. The Hokage staggered to his chair and slumped into it. Pulling a pack of squares sheets from one of his drawers, he handed a sheet to each under Chunin. Holding a sheet between his fore and middle finger, hold your sheet like so, and when I say your name, channel your chakra into the paper, like so, the square in his fingers ignited and burned around the edges as the center crumbled into sand. Konohamaru, the sheet just crumbled into a pile of sand, that then flashed, leaving the boy with a scorched face. Udon, the square turned to sand and drifted out the window. Moegi, the sheet turned soggy and dripped to greasy flames. 
The Hokage swallowed, Gara. The sheet flapped in his fingers for a count of three before forming perfect strips that swirled around the boy's head before dissolving into sand. Naruto. The sheet ripped in half. As half of the sheet fell to the floor, it burst into green fire, not even leaving ash. The other half regrew until Naruto had a full sheet. The Hokage finished a few notes, then opening a bottom drawer, pulled out a large jug of sake and poured an unhealthy amount into his teacup, and slammed it. Okay. Good news is that you all have strong affinities. Konohamaru, you are like me, a earth with a fire. Udon, you are earth with a minor air. Moegi, a water with a fire. Gara is air with earth to grant the sand release. Your father was also a Jishin user, and it was a bloodline trait. He refilled his cup. Naruto, your sheet, ripping or cutting in two claims that you are an heir, but the green fire or the regrowth is new to me. Naruto frowned. I think the green flame is from my foxfire, he rubbed his tummy. He looked at the trio of cadets, your silence on this. Your grandparents already know about this and it is the main reason that they tell you to avoid me. I am the village's Jinchuriki. I carry a biju. So does Gara here. I won't tell you which one either of us carries, but know that it is the key to our power, but it is also why the people of our villages watch us. If improperly sealed or angered, we can show real nasty traits. Treat us proper and stay clear when we get pissed, and you will be okay. Okay. The trio coursed. Now run along. Naruto clasped his hands behind his back. Class starts in five minutes and you have some questions to ask Aruka sensei When the kids did not move, Gara popped his cork from the gourd and a wave of sand lashed out at the kids, who ran screaming from the room. Gara frowned at his sand as it rippled before him. I think I am going to find a river outside the gates to wash my sand. Looking at the Hokage, I would like an escort that you feel you can trust, Hokage-sama. Just to keep things civil. The old man scribbled a note, and passed it to the redhead. Take this to the east gate, there a pair of chunin will take care of arrangements. Gara bow his head and strolled out the door. Naruto moved to follow, but was stopped by Jiraiya's voice. And where do you think you were going? In the privacy of his room, a figure in a baggy jumper, like an oversized baby romper, hopped about try and get his leg on. With a snick and a pop, the leg slid into the hip joint like it was supposed to. He shook his leg, then tested it, before stepping out and shifting his whole weight onto it. Let's call this guy. Karasu. After doing a light kata, he pulled a kanai from his jumper and walked the blades across his fingers, then the other hand. Then he pulled another kanai and used both hands. He nodded, his manual dexterity was passing. Seeing as he could not eat in his present state, he would have to find something else to do. Maybe I should go see what Sis is up to. So he walked out the door, and down the hall, where hopping from window was jumping and landing practice, using the doors and what not took better finite skill. In other words, it was harder to do. He found her missing from her room, but the guy at the front desk of their hotel said she had gone out that morning. He tottered out into the relative cool sun of the land of fire, and tried to blend into the crowd. The civilians smiled at him, where some of the ninja frowned at him, before looking at the bundle on his back, nodding to themselves and continuing on. Oto-sama, a small voice asked, Why does that man have no chakra coils? He froze, his head ratcheted around and cranked down to peer at a girl in light tan robes with large pale pupil less eyes and dark hair. Hanabi-chan, that is not a polite question to ask. The Hyuga male with long hair next to her spoke in a bored tone of voice. Our funny man squatted lower to see the girl on her level, being careful of the bundle on his back. Guess. While he had gotten the basics of fine motor control, he was still having trouble with the aspects of speech. She frowned cutely, her veins at her eyes bulging. She reached out and poked him with her finger, at the shoulder joint. His arm fell off. She screamed. And hid behind her father, who, while not a facial muscle twitch, his eyes danced with sadistic glee. Karasu just stared at his arm. That never happened before. Oto-sama. Hanada-chan stepped from the crowd, swatted her father's arm. Be nice. Putting a hand on her younger sister's shoulder, Hanabi-chan. This one of the Suna Genin I was telling you about over breakfast. The girl frowned as her eyes bulged, for a second. Or rather his puppet. If you look at the bundle on his back you can see. The youngling stepped out, her bulging as she gave the Suna puppeteer a more detailed inspection. Oh, Sue. This is what happens when mothers allow boys to play with dollies. 
Hyuga Sama spoke. Yeah. The Suna puppet spoke. A pretty girl comes along and pokes us, and we fall to pieces. The young Hyuga blushed and hid behind her father. Karasu picked up his arm and tucked it into his jumper. Standing, he bows to the trio. Thank you, I found a weakness I knew nothing about. He turned and trailed off into the crowded street. Hyuga Sama frowned at his eldest. Something drastic had happened yesterday. He really needed to find out what. And today she wanted to visit the Yamanaka flower shop before noon. Just as they had finished breakfast, a branch member had whispered something in her ear, and she had said she was going to the flower shop. Knowing her hobbies of flower pressing and medical creams, Hyuga Sama said he would take her. As a good daughter of the clan, she accepted it, but her body language said that she would have preferred that he stay out of it. Maybe it was time to talk to Yamanaka. There was talk among the servant branch of the family that whispered. Talk that his eldest was stalking the Jinchuriki of the village. Talk that yesterday. The blonde caught her spying on him, that he took her to the onsen. While it was clear that it was for the females of the party soak in the baths, while the males were seeking out the counsel of a master of Fuenjutsu. Hayuga snapped his head around to glare at his eldest as she yammered about something to her younger sister. First she is seen in arms of the Jinchuriki, in the company of the Suna trio, going to the onsen. Where the males visited a master of Fuenjutsu. The only master of Fuenjutsu that is known for being around onsens at any given time is Jiraiya of the Sanin. A red head was seen in their company, and I heard rumors that her name was Kashina. He licked his lips, damn you Hitomi, first you die, leaving me with two very beautiful girls, I can just the boys lining up to take advantage of my baby girls, now I have the damn troublemaker of a Jinchuriki sniffing after my little girl. Not going to happen. Then the worst thing that could happen to a father happened. Did you see the tits on that Hyuga girl yesterday? A teen civilian asked his buddy, and that blonde Baka not only grabs them, but gets kissed too. He or she froze. The vein in his forehead pulsed. Not just kissed, but when he removed his hand, she grabbed it, and showed him how to handle her. The other boy snickered. And to make it worse, a small man with a small pipe spoke up. The idiot did not even know what the whole thing was about. She chases him all of the village for the last two years, and he is as clueless as a newborn. Nah, the first boy again. A newborn can learn, the dumb blonde is just useless. Maybe not. The small man said. There are a few betting pools in play, if the blonde were to know of them and is just playing dumb until he can cash in. A little breeder like her, and the pools? How much are we talking about here? The second boy asked. About six pools here in the village. The small man tapped his chin with the pipe stem. Pulling three to four figures in bets per month, going on three years. Both boys whistled. And now there is word that she is getting tired of waiting on him, the small man said. Run demon spawn, run, the boys crowed. Then the girls had pulled their father to far to hear any more. Or should I worry about my little girl attacking the Jinchuriki? Naruto moved to follow Gara, but was stopped by Jiraiya's voice. And where do you think you are going? Naruto stopped and looked the old men slumped in their seats, he he he, he scratched the back of his head. Okay sensei, the gaki needs an instructor in basics of the tonto knife use and an air type. Where can I find one? My son. The old man packed his pipe. He is a wind type and is known for using combat knives. He peered into his glass sphere. He is with his team on the watch point. Okay. And a clone popped and ran off. Why did you send a clone? The Hokage asked. Because you too have something to say. Naruto answered. Something more. I have received reports that you were running about with a red-headed female yesterday. The Hokage. Slowly packed his pipe. Also there is this, Kashina, I keep hearing about. Ah oh, yes. Give me a minute. Naruto sat beside the toad sage and looked within. As he faded into being on the mindscape, he noticed that the glaring sun was gone, as the mesa was now an island. The water swirled in and pooled about the carved rock. Kashina was sprawled on the cushions, her human form lost, but still wearing the kimono. Naruto smirked to see a fox the size of Inazuka-sama's partner in a silk kimono, on her pack, tails everywhere, snoring. Naruto waved his hand and a foghorn sounded. The effect was almost instant. The form of the biju blurred as she took human form, dressed in armor of the old samurai. A katana was in her obi, ready to quickly draw it. Then the headache hit. Glaring at the kit, 
Kashina staggered to the edge and puked into the stream of water, turning the water from crystal clear blue, to a foggy red. A wave of nausea washed over the boy. The red was carried away by the water. What was that? What? The fox grinned as her armor shifted to a new silk kimono. Oh that. She grinned as she looked about. She nodded, much better, the umbrella is no longer needed, but still welcome. The water. She waved her hand at the stream, is your chakra stream. By dipping my tails into it, I can lend you my power. The more tails I put in, the more power you get. She settled herself on the cushions. Now what are you up to? Hokage Gigi and Aero Sanin would like a word about you. Best way to answer their questions is to summon you in your clone. But summoning you as you were would only insult you, and allow the two old men to perv on you. Besides, my sensei in the Foxfire Jutsu has asked that I not summon her without warning unless an emergency. My dear boy. She slinked to her feet, and strolled up to him. I do think you are beginning to learn. The Hokage and his first disciple watched the boy that all their plans, hopes, and teachings had lead to. Serutobi had taught Jiraiya, Jiraiya had taught the fourth, Minato, who had wooed the woman who born this boy. This boy that thought up the sexy no jutsu, and then passed it along to the Hokage's grandson, who used said jutsu in a duel whenever they could get away with it. I wonder, is he a true believer? The Hokage asked. If not, he is the closest I have met that has yet to step over the line. The Sanin frowned. What is the story of the Hyuga girl? Hyuga Hanada. Clan heir. Has a crush on the boy, but is too shy to follow through. Not for much longer. She might be moving to take the boy into hand. Jiraiya pulled a flask from his vest. Taking a pull, yesterday, the Gaki grabbed her breast reaching for her arm. She then instructed him in the proper manner in which to touch her, before she fainted. And the boy understood the meaning of everything? The Hokage frowned. Nope, and Kashina threatened everyone not to tell the boy. Serutobi pulled a small scroll from under the a pile of scrolls. Let's see, just missed my day. His eyes grew big. Can you get a message to Tsunade? Through the slug village if you must. The worry around the mon's eyes was scary. She is in danger of winning a massive betting pool. She has three of the next five days. If the brat learns of the girl's feeling on her day, she could pay off her debts in the land of fire easily. He pulled his own bottle from his desk. You remember what happens when she wins big don't ya? Just then the chakra around the boy flared red. Arriving at the flower shop, Hanada and Hanabi disappeared into the gardens to look over the rare flowers that the Yamanaka clan imported. Inoichi was leaning on the counter, chatting with his wife. Hiyashi approached quietly. Yamanaka-san, a word please. His training in reading body language noticed that the tall blonde was not expecting the clan head, but was expecting someone from his clan. Hiyashi frowned in the direction of his daughters. I worry that interactions between my daughter and a person of interest have climbed to new levels of concern. Yamanaka-chan snorted. Your eldest is showing signs of shedding her cloak. This time next week, she could be walking the boy on a short leash. Then she giggled, it is also possible he still won't know what is going on. I never knew until Hitomi slapped me for looking at a Iwa girl. Said I was hers and I was not to look anywhere else. Hiyashi shifted to the stand position. I overheard some street kids talking. I know about my daughter's extra credit work. But I fear that it is becoming more than just a phase. There is a marriage contract in play, but I do not want her to feel forced, not at this time. I will tell you, Hayuga sama that your daughter has asked for my help in matters of her mind before. This morning I got a message that she wanted to talk further. Now while I can not reveal what is said in our sessions, I can state that she has strong feelings for the Uzumaki boy. If he is the one you have a contract for, I do believe that she would be overjoyed. Glancing at the gossip queen, what do you know of the boy's bloodlines? Both went still. A look passed between them. Rumor states that he was abandoned at the orphanage on the morning after the attack. Not abandoned, never abandoned. Hiyashi hissed. His impassive face turned mean. His mother was outside the walls, giving birth to him, when they were attacked. His father was there, and the two of them got to meet him, just before they sealed the biju into him. He was delivered to the orphanage, because the elders and the Hokage could not give him to any clan, as it would tip the balance of power too far into that clan's favor. That explains Fugaku's and Danzo's reaction. Inoichi sighed, in the orphanage, the boy was under the watch of loyal ninja. I heard that some civilians tried to poison the boy. Wait, 
his mother and father, before they sealed the Kiyubi into him. Yamanaka Chan spoke up, that would make him Uzumaki Namikaze Naruto, heir to the Uzushiogakure and the Namikaze inheritance. And you have a marriage contract? The rumor monger asked. It is in my wife's hand, but as I understand the Uzumaki traditions, the woman is the prime member of the union. So in the eyes of the Uzumaki clan, my wife was the one to barter the contract, and as such, it would more weight than anything any male could have done. You have a contract for your heir to wed, and take the Namikaze heir. The blonde woman licked her lips, and by doing so, is set to inherit the entire fortune. Her eyes filled with tears, if I can spin this right, I can get six, maybe seven months of gossip out of this. I swear that I will keep the boy's name out of this, but can you just see it? The money grubbers, the power grabbers, the keep the boy's name out, but do include a tip, as to the wording of the contract, it includes both, Hayuga heir, and, Hanada, by name. Be sure to include that the Namikaze heir's mother has sole power to put aside the contract. The blonde's chuckles were nasty, as the gossip queen grabbed a certain hat and her handbag, before leaving the shop. Hiyashi frowned. What was with that hat? Her sign that there is new gossip, Inoichi grinned. A feather means that it is from outside of the land of fire. A flower is from within the land of fire, and just plain like when she left, means that not only village related, but high scandal and power shifting is in play. Just you watch, within the hour this place is going to be buzzing with her ladies to find the out the newest, juiciest piece of gossip. Hiyashi frowned. I hope to be out of here by then. Then grinned a devilish manner. Tell Hanada Chan that I need her to look like she is crying when she leaves here, just as the ladies arrive. I am taking Hanabi shopping for her first set of ninja gear. Turning towards the door. Hanabi, attend me. As he strode out the door, his youngest scurrying to his side, as his eldest approached the mindwalker. Did you find any interesting flowers? He asked in his cold voice. Not really, father, the girl spoke in a quiet tone, the good blooms won't get here until next week. Onesen was just looking to see what could be used for her medicines. Come, we need to get your gear. The head of Hyuga lead the way into the old town side of the marketplace. A young woman in a dark kimono stood looking into a saloon, as she clutched a pig in a pink vest and pearls. Her eyes never leaving the heavy busted blonde that sat in the middle of the saloon. The gamblers were playing a dice game. As the dice were thrown, a small slug popped out of thin air. It landed on the dice, absorbing the dice. Foul! cried several of the gamblers. Ah, Tsunade! The slug rumbled. Word has come down the pipeline. You are in danger of winning a large bet. You made a long shot bet a few years back, with a bookie from Konohagakure. How big? The look of terror on her face was enough to quiet the grumblers. Enough to pay off all your debts in the land of fire. All of them. The blonde jumped to her feet, Shizun. We are going home. Now, she fled out the door. She left her, winnings, behind. The owner of the house, a balding fat guy by the name of Duke, picked up her chips, counted them, and noted the amount. Why did she run? A watcher called out. Have you ever heard the whole story of the legendary sucker? Duke asked, she will take almost any bet and bet big. Most betting houses are willing to extend her massive lines of credit for her medical expertise. They trade her IOUS for medical work. As some are run by shady people, there is a high call for her work. He poured a small glass of a golden liquid. When she wins big, something horrid happens to her or those she cares about. So, she is happy to bet big on every long shot that crosses her path, just so she can lose? A weasel-faced old man asked. Yep, and usually she just leaves the winnings and runs. Trying to avoid the fallout of her luck. Duke downed the honey amber syrup in a single gulp. Another reason the big betting parlors enjoy her presence. Hey Duke, we need new dice, the slug took the last set. A player called out. Good. Another jeered back. That last set was weighted funny. Naruto snapped upright. His eyes were wide with a panicked look about them. Damn, she just keeps getting freakier and freakier. A quick twitch of hand signs and a poof of smoke gave birth to a young woman just a little taller than the boy with red hair, and a blue kimono. Hokage Gigi, I would like to introduce Kiyubi chan. Call me Kashina, please. That girl, grinned, showing perfect white teeth, with oversized canines. Only a select few will recognize the name in reference to the kit, and so much of this is due to her anyway. You do look like her. 
The Hokage leaned back in his chair, I would have thought you hated her. My feelings for her are complicated, to say the least. The biju in a clone sat beside the boy. She bound me in a keke jenke of chakra chains, something the kit has yet to engage. If he was taught the basics of his father's great jutsu, and his mother's clan arts, he would be a power not to be messed with. She licked her teeth, her lips pulled back in her eerie grin. In the meantime, I do have to teach him the kitsune arts of seishin no hai, spirit fire. Plus he needs to learn to control the amount of chakra needed to use to summon the various summons. Just then there was a shout rang out from over the village. Naruto. Get back here and die like the dog you are. The clone of Naruto landed on the roof of the watch point. Shikamaru was poring over the shogi board as Asuma was leaned back, savoring his cigarette. Choji, the loyal friend that he is, sat off to the side, nibbling a chip. Ino was on the far side of the roof, trying to master the whip of a vine. The clone grinned, before stalking the blonde female. A quick henge into Uchiha Teme, to hide the orange, was spotted by the males, who sat up this new entertainment. As he stepped behind her, in his best, Sasuke, voice, your basic form is unrefined. You are just flailing about. To get a proper hit, you need to grip, his hand closed over hers, and lash. He guided her arm through the full strike, the end of the whip biting into the wooden rail, leaving a massive gash in the railing. Turning his head to Asuma, Asuma Sensei, your presence is requested in the Hokage's office. His left hand slid around the girl's hips to place itself on her stomach, just below her navel, and jerked her back into his hard front. To get more power into your strike, his hips swayed, drawing hers with them. You got to use not just your arm and shoulder, but your hips too. This time, as he led her through the motions, their hips rocking as one, the lash shredded the entire post holding the railing. Thank you, Sasuke kun. Ino was flushed, but not tongue tied. The hanged clone nibbled her neck. If you really want to improve, you should join me in Master Uzumaki. He really knows how to use the lash. He released the girl and walked away. Ino frowned as she turned to look at the boy elite and noticed that the emblem across the what she thought was Uchiha kun had a swirl instead of the red and white fan of the Uchiha crest. Without thinking, her lash licked out and ripped through the swirl, causing the clone to revert to his orange jumpsuit. Naruto, get back here and die like the dog you are and the jinchuriki was off, the enraged blonde on his heels, swinging her rose vine whip at the boy as he screamed and laughed. Asuma leaned back as he shared a look with the boys on his squad. Is it worth it to head over to the Hokage's office with me, if only to avoid her, when she has finished beating the living shit out of the gaki? Choji turned to Shikamaru. You do the math. If today is going to be anything like yesterday, then yes. Shikamaru started to pick up the pieces. Besides, she is going to ask if we knew that it was Naruto Dobi sneaking up on her, and unless we have a good reason not to answer, she is going to use that whip on us. The Hokage it is then. Choji rolled to his feet. Hiyashi and Hanabi had ducked into a small shop just off the main street. A small, blind, old woman squinted at them over the counter. Ah, Hayuga sama got your package right here. Ten kanai, twenty-five shuriken, a full field medical kit, and a canteen. Just what a cadet needs. Just bring her back when she reaches Jenin and I will give her the next level. Thank you, Baba San. Payment will be delivered to your accounts. Hiyashi collected the bundle on counter. Oh, no doubt you will be hearing some gossip concerning my eldest. Something to add to the whispers. The lost heir of Uzushiogakure is seeking to dispute the Namikaze heir's contract. The boy's father contracted for my daughter through my brother. There is a clause that gives the boy certain rights over the Hyuga clan, but my brother died before he could divulge them to me. Carrying the bundle under his arm, the head of the great clan led his youngest daughter out into the street. Father, what was that? Little Hanabi asked as she trotted at his heel. A game of the highest order. It is called by many names, but it just boils down to politics. I will not tell you what I am doing, as it will adjust how others react to the news. If you want to play, you need must find the course of the game, and decide where it is you want to ride it to, how to get there, and what is needed to not only win, but to survive. As they stepped out onto the main street, an orange blur sped past, howling in terror and glee. As the blonde boy cleared a pushcart, and careened down the ally just beyond the two Hyuga. Naruto. Get back here and die like the dog you are. A purple blur was not two steps behind the boy, 
lashing at him with a budding rose vine whip. The two Hyuga just looked at one another, shuddered, and moved on. He led the way to a tailor and had little Hanabi measured for her ninja wear, to be delivered just before the evening meal. There he dropped the hint that the Jinchuriki was contracted to conceive a child on his eldest, that the elders of his clan were behind it. The whole shopping trip took just under an hour, so they returned to the Yamanaka flower just as the gossips from all over town converged on the helpless shop. Just as the ladies moved on the door, it burst open and Hanada Chan charged by, her eyes red and tearing, as if she had been crying. A glance at her father, and she flinched, before clasping in on herself. She fell into step as he brushed past, her little sister held a look of confusion and fear on her little face. As the main gates boomed shut behind them, Hiyashi spoke. Hanabi Chan, take her to wash her face and then meet me in my study. Put these in your room. He handed her the bundle. The girls moved slowly to obey. A group of elders meet him outside his study. What is this we hear about that demon spawn man handling our air, and being allowed to get away with it? A granny screeched. He was surrounded by the Suna trio, and a kunoichi by the name of Kashina. Hiyashi put his hands in his sleeves, I doubt he got away with anything. The red-headed girl has very explicate thoughts on perverse behavior. Why was the heir crying? A late elder asked. Info on her marriage contract surfaced. Hiyashi did something un -Hyuga ish He grinned. Until this morning, I did not know if the contracts were valid. One is for the heir of Uzushiogakure, written, as in clan tradition, by the mothers of the to-be-wed only the mother of the heir, can break the contract without reprisal, with death of my wife, we lost the leverage. My brother had acquired a contract with the Namikaze heir. And this morning? The oldest of the elders leaned on his cane. I received notice that not only are the Uzushiogakure heir and Namikaze heir alive, but they have both expressed an interest in my daughter and heir. Hiyashi's face turned grim. There is also the fact that the Jinchuriki has come of age to be interested in a female of his own. With Hanada's interest in the boy, it could turn to our advantage if she were to ensnare him. He locked eyes with the eldest female. What could we do if we had the power of any one of those three? He turned into his study, closing the door behind him. He paused as he listened. The elders quickly moved on, no doubt to talk about to spin this to their advantage. As he settled behind his low desk, a light tapping at the door alerted he to the fact that his girls had returned. As the two of them slipped in and closed the door, Hiyashi silence sealed the room. Hanada-chan, what did you use to look like you were crying? I brushed my cheeks with a leaf from a plant in the shop. Once I was in my rooms, a simple chakra flush and my face was almost back to normal. She was looking subdued. Hiyashi nodded. I fear that I have put you in a precarious position. Just before you were born, your mother signed a marriage contract with her good friend, Kashina. You were to marry her son during your fifteenth year. Hanada Chan froze, her breathing all but stopped. Before you freak out my girl, listen. I have done something awful to you. I have cast you into the great game, as I have done for your future husband. Hanabi Chan here knows of a few of my steps. Now remember, this game is played on four levels here, clan, village, country, and nation. Hanabi Chan, tell your sister what was done today, and how this affects us three in the clan. The young girl cocked her head for a minute. Straightening her head, she glared at her father. You did something while we were looking at flowers, did you not? I did. I will tell you after you draw the first lines. The young Hyuga poured over her knowledge, before standing and pulling a silk rope, to summon a branch servant. I do believe we will want tea with this. When I was shown the first steps of the game, father was playing in the village, but if what I heard is true, the position of heir is no longer open. That means to save myself from the branch house, I must master the game on the clan level first, and fast. Hiyashi raised an eyebrow, and released the seal. Shortly, a female branch member arrived with tea tray for three. She quickly served the three, and rose to leave. Stay. The command came from Hanada Chan. As the woman settled in the corner, Arheim turned to her little sister. You were saying. At Baba Sama's, while we getting my academy things, father mentioned your contract to the heir of Uzushiogakure. In said contract, you are named as heir to the clan. As I understand things, if I am forced to challenge you for the title of heir, the bloody bastard, gets us both on your wedding night. The serving woman gasped. At the clothing store, while I was being fitted, Hanabi Chan paused to sip her tea. Father mentioned something about us being used by something called a Jinchuriki as breeders. 
something about improving the bloodlines. I also overheard a few things about the Namikaze heir, and that he is seeking your hand. The serving woman was squirming now. Hanada Chan was peering into her tea with her head bowed. As it seems that you have somewhere else to be, go. The branch woman all but ran from the room. As the door clicked shut, Hanada Chan chat looked up, her eyes blazing. A signal to her father to reseal the room, and we are alone. Now father, before I strip you of what feeling and muscle control you have below the waist, explain. This was not the shy and meek mouse that he knew. This was the scary warrior goddess that told him they were getting married. Ah yes. You are to wed the Namikaze heir, the Uzushiogakure heir, and to be the sexual plaything of the village's Jinchuriki. Yes, this true. It is also true that these three titles belong to one boy. What else is true, is that you have been stalking this boy for the last six years. Hanada Chan froze again. Then fainted. Hiyashi nodded, and sipped his tea. Hanabi, why did you say that bit about having to challenge her for the title of heir? To keep the elders in a tizzy, if they threaten me with a seal, I challenge, and our husband gets us both. Besides there are only two boys that are fit to be my consort. She grinned at her father, Uzumaki Naruto and Serutobi Konohamaru. Either way, I win. Then her grin turned nasty, as she leaned over to her sister. Wunchen, Naru-kun is finished with me, it's your turn. Hanada chan snapped up. As her father and sister laughed, she glared at them, not funny, she stormed out of the office, smashing through the seal. Naruto. Get back here and die like the dog you are. The three males turned to look out the window. Then the two older men looked at the boy. What did you do this time? They asked in unison. No idea. The blonde scratched the back of his head in confusion. Then Asuma shunshined into the room with both Choji and Shikamaru. Not only are you able to show Ino how to use her new whip, that she forms from her mother's jutsu, but you also are teaching her to use it in a full combat situation. The Serutobi Janin popped a fresh tobacco stick into his lips. Before digging into his pockets for his lighter, flickering an eye to his father, he shows up as she is trying to lash a post and rail five paces away from her. He hinges into Uchiha-kun, and slides in close. First he corrects her hand and arm motions, then he shows her the body motions to really get the most out of the whip. He teased her, nibbled on her neck, before turning to leave. He informs us that we are needed here, as he is leaving. Something was off to her, and she lashed out, disrupting his henge. Then he is off, leading her across the town. A flick of his thumb, a small flame from a concealed lighter, lights the smokestick. In five minutes he takes a struggling beginner and turns her into a terror on the run and judging by the looks of you all, she is chasing a shadow clone. Choji munched his chips, as Shikamaru leaned against the window frame as he watched the clouds overhead. Choji snorted, as Shikamaru mumbled, troublesome. Naruto stood slowly as he reached both hands behind him. He pulled both Tonto knives and tossed them slowly to Asuma. Am told you can teach me the basics of these beauties. I am also told that I have a heavy wind affinity. He cocked his head to the side. Asuma weighed the knives in his hands. As a test, he drew his chakra through one of the blades. The blade was lighter than it was a second ago, it floated in his palm. If he had not already had such a heavy preference for his trench knives, he would desire these beauties. Where did you get these? Naruto gave the directions to the little shop. The older ninja nodded. Asuma grinned, tossing the tonto to Naruto. I know the place, that's where I got my first set of these. He drew out one of his trench knives. As the young blonde sheathed his blades, Asuma tossed his over. The old man there has been there for years. His grandfather opened that store when the village first needed a weapons shop. The Hokage spoke up. That is the main reason there is no sigh over the door. Yeah, he has some really nice stuff, and some really weird stuff too. Naruto returned the knife. I got my blades. Gara got some funky bracers his sister got new fans, and Konkuro got a battle top. The Hokage snapped up. A battle top? Here in my village. His pipe hung from his hand. Do you know how dangerous those cursed things can be? Naruto cocked his head. Damn thing likes to eat its way through old wood and stone. Not to worry, sensei, I looked it over when the kids stopped by to see me yesterday. The Senban shooters were empty and the venom sacks were dry, too dry. All it had were chakra blades, and the boy was proficient enough to control the top while waterwalking. The Sanin spoke up. Coo coo coo. 
The young, red-haired woman beside the white-haired man spoke. I thought you spent most of your day watching the gaki. How could you have missed the top? I do have to spend a few hours doing paperwork. The old man muttered as he sipped from his teacup. Naruto frowned. Why do I suddenly detest roses? Asuma chuckled. Looks like Ino got your clone. Turning to look out the window, close your eyes and think about her. Try to remember this morning with the whip. Naruto closed his eyes as he thought about his fellow blonde and what they were doing this morning. The clone of Naruto landed on the roof of the watch point. Shikamaru was poring over the shogi board as Asuma was leaned back, savoring his cigarette. Choji, the loyal friend that he is, sat off to the side, nibbling a chip. Ino was on the far side of the roof, trying to master the whip of a vine. The clone grinned, before stalking the blonde female. A quick henge into Uchiha Teme, to hide the orange, was spotted by the males, who sat up to watch this new entertainment. As he stepped behind her, in his best, Sasuke, voice, your basic form is unrefined. You are just flailing about. To get a proper hit, you need to grip, his hand closed over hers, and lash. He guided her arm through the full strike, the end of the whip biting into the wooden rail, leaving a massive gash in the railing. Turning his head to Asuma, Asuma-sensei, your presence is requested in the Hokage's office. His left hand slid around the girl's hips to place itself on her stomach, just below her navel, and jerked her back into his hard front. To get more power into your strike, his hips swayed, drawing hers with them. You got to use not just your arm and shoulder, but your hips too. This time, as he led her through the motions, their hips rocking as one, the lash shredded the entire post holding the railing. Thank you, Sasuke-kun. Ino was flushed, but not tongue-tied. The hanged clone nibbled her neck, if you really want to improve, you should join me in Master Uzumaki. He really knows how to use the lash, he released the girl, and walked away. Ino frowned as she turned to look at the boy elite, and noticed that the emblem across his back of who she thought was Uchiha-kun had a swirl instead of the red and white fan of the Uchiha crest. Without thinking, her lash licked out and ripped through the swirl, causing the clone to revert to his orange jumpsuit. Naruto. Get back here and die like the dog you are. He cut through the clothing district, knowing that her shopping instinct would keep the damage to a minimum, but it would also allow for the fastest way to teach her to outthink her target. On the border on the clothing district he spotted two Hyuga, the young girl looked like Hanada chan He sped on by, hurtling over a handcart, before he careened down the next ally, heading for the practice grounds. Behind him, he heard the handcart explode, as Ino cursed at him. He only laughed and poured on more speed. He dodged a blonde woman in a hat that showed signs of once being adorned with flowers or feathers, but was now striped bare. Need something. Even I know that. Damn it mother, you let him get away. Ino hollered as she was closing on her prey. Quickly they were past the market region, and Naruto Bushin took to the walls and rooftops. Ino was right there behind him, only now she had two whips licking at his heels. Seeing the small lake near the hot springs, he leapt for freedom. Only he never made it. Toge Barricado, Thorn Barricade. Naruto snapped upright. A quick hand sign and two clones bolted from the room. I think she might have overdone her Toge Barricado, Thorn Barricade. Asuma looked a bit worried. Okay, I will teach the Gaki, if you, Sanin, will teach Choji your hair jutsu. The white-haired man grinned. Deal. Asuma shunshined away. The toad Sanin turned to the biju. Testing the Gaki's affinities, we got some weird results. Show her boy. Naruto held up the piece of paper. Instead of being a two-inch square of thin paper, it was a five-inch square of board stock. He wrinkled his brow, before channeling his chakra. No. The biju moved, knocking the card from the boy's hand. You have any idea what could happen if he charges that card again? Her tails manifested, twitching. She ran through the hand signs for Ox Dragon Snake Rat Ox. Akuma Hanshu Kinshi Geijutsu. Shi no Kami Gaiden Shoken. Demon Lord Forbidden Art. Death God Guardian Summon. She clapped and slammed both palms on the floor. All first, all noise stopped. Then the light dimmed. Between one heartbeat and the next a ten foot tall, man, was standing in the center of the room. White long mane, a white clay mask, dark gray robes, a large knife clenched in, his teeth his hand tucked into the robe's sleeves. Nara sat up, fully alert. Choji stopped eating. You summoned me? His voice was not loud, 
In fact his voice was not sound, but rather the absence of sound. I did. Am I lord? Kiyubi bowed, her ears were pressed flat to her head. My Jinchuriki was about to test for his affinities. But a sheet that was a two inches square of the thinnest paper turned into. This, she reached out and the sheet snapped to her fingers. The sound of wind being sucked from the room, the mortals quickly understood to be that of the great being's laughter. Most of you in this room know not of his parental heritage. Never mind who his grandparents were. The eye holes of the mask swept to the room. Or should I say are. Am I lord? Though the night I was given into the custody of the boy is foggy in my memory, the biju bowed to the giant, I do remember who sealed me within, and who were my previous hosts. I have a few minutes of clarity where my rider left me in hopes of advancing his escape while the fourth sealed me away. The third Hokage looked about the room. He sighed. Okay boys, this is a S-class village secret. Talking about this with anyone not in the know is treason and death. Your fathers know. Nara because he is our battlefield commander. Akamichi Choza in case Naruto ever needed to be grabbed. The Akamichi clan's jutsu are the only ones that can hold Naruto long enough to knock him out. The secret is that while the fourth gave his life to defeat the nine-tailed fox, he did not kill her. She was instead, sealed into his son. The fox has been in the village since the time of the first Hokage, and both times she attacked, she was compelled to do so. So, Naruto is the son of the fourth? Shikamaru pulled a pokey stick from his pocket. Lipping it, my father talks about a great troublesome woman. They were genin together. He feared that he would end up married to her. Uzumaki Kashina. The biju in human form smiled. Yes, she was a strong-willed woman. Even after I was ripped from her seal, and giving birth to her very healthy son, she was able to rush to the field and bind me with her bloodline gift, long enough for the fourth to call of Shikigami here and seal me into their son. But what is known, is that the fourth Hokage was adapted. His birth mother was the strongest ninja from this village. His father never knew that the poor girl was pregnant. The great ghost-masked figure grinned around the knife in its teeth. The current Jinchuriki holds some of the strongest bloodlines in the village. The only one stronger is his daughter. Daughter. From many voices. Naruto fainted, Jiraiya smirked, Choji dropped his bag of chips. Am I lord? He is not old enough to breed yet, but he has been chosen. She has began her hunting of him. Yeah. Just need him to notice tomorrow and I win enough to not have to work except when I want to. Nara poked the drooling blonde with the toe of his sandal. Not going to happen. He notices on a day of great fortune for his grandmother. Already she returns here. Fear drives her like I never could. Taking the sheet from the fox, the being looked it over. A lost art, growing boxes like fruit. Then, he, was gone. Well, that was a bit anticlimactic. Choji reached for his fallen bag. I was expecting a bit more. It depends on how you look at things. Nara returned to the window, watching the clouds overhead. His mother, the last Uzu princess, his father, the fourth Hokage, his grandmother the. The Nara turned slowly to look at the Gama Sanin. If the rumors I am hearing are correct, all three Sanin, in the village, during the same week? Jiraiya was drinking from a bottle, when the Nara said that. After coughing, and getting the drink down the right pipe, what do you mean, all three Sanin? Orochimaru attacked the last Uchiha five days ago, same time as when he tweaked Naruto's seal. The third spoke quietly. How do you get that she is coming? Pulling another pokey stick, Nara smiled. The Great One said strongest Kunoichi from the village. Strongest, not most powerful. We. Okay when this noise is heard most think kids having fun. Not a pig screaming in fear. Tun Tun was for once wishing that she was a cat so she could dig her claws into the panicking blonde as the woman. We. Bounded through the forest. They were two days out as the Jonin runs, but the blonde Sanin could outrun anyone, unless she had just caught her teammate peeping on the bathes. Another two, hops, and the trio landed in front of the great gates of Konohagakure. Setting the young woman from her back on the ground, the blonde Sanin, stepping over the shaking piggy, walked forward, and slapped her palms on the watch desk. Looking the two panicking Chunin in the eye. You will send a runner to the old man, tell him that I am here, and he will meet me at the barbecue place, but he is picking up the tab. She twirled away, her posse staggering after. Asuma was quick to follow the two clones once he had the Sanin's agreement. As the three of them landed in front of the great wall of rose thorn vines, 
they could see the female blonde sprawled across the top of said wall. Now they were not alone, as the owner was looking over the new additions to his area. Turning to glare at the blonde twins, it your fault. Now I will be forced to ruin my new hedge. Asuma looked at the old man. Are you blaming the boy for ruining the wall of rose vines, that we are looking at? Yes. The old man crossed his arms. Just this morning I was hoping for award whining blooms, he crashed into my most prized possession. An arm flailed upwards, just look at the damage he did. Asuma nodded. Okay, as soon as we bring my student down, I will reset this street to the way it was this morning. He pulled a paper packet from his vest. Seeing as the vine wall was not here until the gaki was running this way, and my student threw her. He turned to Naruto's closest clone, shaking a twisted paper tube into sight. What did she call it? Hum. Oh. She called it Toge Barricado, Thorn Barricade. The boy was studying the interweave of the wrist thick vines. So, until the boy cleared that rooftop behind me, this wall was not here. Asuma grinned as he lighted the cigarette. If that wall was not here, until just before he barreled into it, it is not yours. Now if you want it, and if you want me to cut a doorway or gateway into it for you, just ask. Otherwise, as soon as my student regains enough chakra, I will have her dismiss this wall. No need. Just a four foot wide by six foot high opening for a gate, and we are good. The old man was quick to protect the so-called improvement before him. The clones bounded up the wall, and carefully picked the girl up, before dropping back to ground level. Handing the girl off to the janin, they dispersed. How does he do that? The old man asked. I think that is one question you do not want me to answer just yet. Asuma pulled his knife out, focused his chakra and swiped it twice before him. That should do it. If you want more, you will need to contract with the ninja mission board. He turned and walked towards the Yamanaka flower shop. Five of the thirteen of the Hyuga Elder Council had just settled down to tea. Each of them had their branch servant with them. Before any of them could speak, there was a tapping at the door. Before anyone could twitch, the door slid open, and a branch woman shuffled in on her knees. Elders, forgive my intrusion, her forehead touched the floor, almost if groveling, but standing orders from more than one of you demanded that I report to you at once. I was just serving tea to Lord Hiyashi and his daughters. It seems that our lord has left a loophole in the marriage contract to the heir of Uzushiogakure. If Hanabiheim is threatened with the seal, she will challenge Hanadaheim for the position of heir. And due to the loophole, the heir of Uzushiogakure gets them both. Is that all? One of the men growled. No, elder. There was mention of the two of them being given to the village's Jinchuriki as breeding stock. Something about improving the bloodlines. Hanada Chan. Ah, Sama was shaking, when she dismissed me. The woman was shaking now. I detected a minor killing intent and hurried from the room. This was my first stop. Go. Think no more on this. The one man in the room that the others knew had nothing to do with the serving woman. This is elder business. The poor woman looked up, at him. Looked him in the eye. I fear that you were incorrect my lord. Hanabiheim was talking about being out in the village getting her things for the academy when she overheard his lordship talking to others about the heirs and Jinchuriki. Heirs? A grandmotherly elder spoke up. You mentioned only one at first, but now. Yes, lady. The heir of Uzushiogakure and the Namikaze heir have marriage contracts with Lord Hiyashi. The poor woman licked her lips. If he is talking to others outside these walls. If what this poor girl tells us is even partly true, a male with milky eyes shivered, we are at a major disadvantage. Hiyashi, by just talking about these contracts, has moved the clan higher in the standings of the village, the nation, and even the great game. To move against him, or his daughters, could cause us to lose more than just an opportunity. He closed his eyes. We need more information. I move we send a notice to our agent in the fire palace for information on these contracts. We will also need information on Uzu marriage customs. Agreed. We wait. The grandmotherly elder smiled. If this ends well, we claim victory as a clan. If it fails. It fails at he or she's feet. The three others grinned. Karasu, quickly found, his, sister. She was dancing with a few of the village's children, learning to, dance, with her small fans. He knew that after she learned with these kids, she would dance on the rooftops, and use all of what she learned. He sat on a bench nearby and, worked, to reattach, his, arm because the arm is designed to be used independent of the body as a whole, but also with the body for the illusion of being the puppeteer, the link was quickly fixed, 
and he was able to walk the kanai along his knuckles while channeling the chakra string through the torso. Nodding to himself, he noticed that the puppet nodded, while the human did not. Konkuro, what are you doing? His sister asked. As Karasu looked up at her, he shrugged. She frowned. Why are you being so quiet? To answer her, Karasu turned his head to left. 0 0.360 degrees. Ah, Karasu. Any idea where Gara is? The puppet shrugged. Naruto. Get back here and die like the dog you are. The blonde Jinchuriki came barreling through the street, the blonde lasher on his heels. He bolted out of the alley, running on the walls more than he was on the street itself. Using the speed and leverage he had on his side he cleared the two Suna Nin and scrambled onto the roofs on the other side of the plaza. The purple-clad female used her whips to grip the tall post off to the side and sling herself onto a tangent of the boy's path. And they say Gara is a handful. Tamari spoke in low tones, at least all he wants to do is kill you. This guy is. Three Ambu sprinted up, looked about, and dashed off on the trail of the two blondes. Karasu nodded, at least Gara was quiet. The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.